scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Thou art worthy, El Shaddai. Lord Almighty, strong and breasted one, praise Jehovah, I am that I am, you are the most high God. Listen. I want you to learn the art of God's presence. A.W. Tozer, a man known to be the 21st century prophet, wrote a book, The Pursuit of God's Presence. This generation does not know how to practice the presence of God. We know how to pray. We know how to fast. We know how to stretch in tongues for hours and days. But we do not know how to cultivate the art of his presence. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in my life. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Oh, Potent Father of mercy and grace, Thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, you're truly welcome in my life. I'm worshiping Him. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Omnipotent Father of mercy and grace, thou art welcome. You are the fire in me. You are the power at work in me. You are my present helper. Holy Spirit, I adore. You are that fire in me. You are the power at work in me. You are my ever present helper. Holy Spirit, I adore. 
Say, Lord, cast me not away from your presence. Pray and say, Lord, may I not. Many of us have lost the experience of his presence. You're just operating power. I'm telling you. Your presence. This is part of the meeting. You can really get distracted and forget his presence. Your presence. I have learned the value of your presence. How can I? How can I lose your presence? What for? Make sure you are praying. This is part of the meeting. Hallelujah. The presence of God, the glory of God, can make a man, it can affect even your physical body. The glory of God, your physical body, it can keep you young, fresh. This is not about money. It's not about prosperity. It's the glory of God. The glory of God can alter you. It can bring you into an atmosphere. This is not just power you invoke and prime. No, no. It's an atmosphere. You live there. You dwell there. You speak from there. You judge things from there. Moses said, show me your glory. God said, no man will see my glory and live. He said, however, I will let my goodness pass by you. And he covered Moses' eyes. And the Bible says he stepped and Moses saw eternity pass. I'm very disturbed at how easily people can give up God's presence to take something that can be found when his presence is treasured. What are you looking for? Fame, money, power, charisma, ministry, anointing, intelligence. You see, I'm telling you, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ We've lost the art of God's presence. That you are praying. Prayer is not the same as the presence of God. Many people think that you are praying in tongues. Have you not seen people who pray week after week every day? But there are certain people when they step in. It's an atmosphere. 
It's an atmosphere. In the glory I will stand. Help me with the symbol. I will stand and I will lift my hand in your glory I will receive every miracle you have for me in your glory I will stand I will stand and I will lift my hand in your glory I will receive every miracle you have for me I love your presence I truly love your presence more than gold more than silver oh I love your presence I love your presence I have learned the value of your presence better than power better than anointing I'm telling you better than fame nothing can be compared to the presence of the Lord Jesus see without the presence of God you don't have a message you don't have a ministry you don't have an assignment learn this everything you will ever be and do will only have value because there is a presence that backs you stop chasing after what his presence can give you i have learned by experience moses said lord do not send us from here yes let the people say we are marking time but don't send us if your presence will not go with us he understood the value many of us have not been trained the, the presence of God is not goosebumps the presence of God is not some ecstatic feeling and the Lord walking with them not answering their prayers walking with them and the Lord making his habitation. Father, teach us your presence and help us to value your presence. In the name of Jesus, please be seated. Hallelujah. How many of you truly love the Lord with your life? Let me see your hands. You truly love the Lord. Some of you love the Lord, but you don't truly love Him. You love Him, but not. Years ago, the Lord asked me and said, Can you die for me? I said, No. I can face persecution for you, I can go through several things. But to die for you, no way. No way. I'm not sure I've gotten to that point. And it did something to my heart. I don't know what it did. I cannot explain. But I know I love him. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I 
truly live for you alone every breath that I take and every moment I'm away have your way in me Lord I give you my heart give you my soul I live for you every breath that I take Would you have your way tonight? Have your way in me. Hallelujah. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way in me. Take your place. Take your place. In my life, have your way, Lord. I want to be under so much influence of the Holy Ghost. I want Him to possess every fiber of my being, just like a demon spirit possesses a man and begins to demonstrate his character through that man. I want to be so full of the Holy Ghost. The Bible says, and Stephen was full of the Holy Ghost to an extent that his face began to glow as though it were that of an angel. There is such a realm, there is such a realm where a man can become like a God upon the earth. Not by usurping authority over people, climbing a mountain in the spirit, the Bible talks of men who this earth was not worthy to receive. They contended for certain things that were higher in the spirit. Always examine yourself to find out whether you are losing his presence. Don't use miracles as a sign that the presence of God is still with you. The psalmist said, cast me not away. That means a man can be casted from his presence. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. It's good to have everyone around. We bless God for last week. Hallelujah. Celebrate God's servant, Pastor Williams. That was a powerful word. Thank you so much, sir. Hallelujah. It was a great time last week. I missed the house. I know some of you didn't miss me. You were very happy. I have good news for you. I'm back. Praise God. I'm back alive, strong. And God kept me for your sake. You shout it more than ever until you change. Hallelujah. If you don't love God, you will not love me. James 1, verse 22. James 1. Please make sure you are writing. These are some of the few things you do that makes you know whether you are growing or you are not growing. If you've been coming here for a long time, if you're coming for the first time, it's okay. Or if you're not yet born again. But if you've been coming for a long time and you don't have a, a good notebook or notepad or jotter or something. Or at least your phone, your notepad on your phone. That you can write out teachings. It tells me how much you value God. It's amazing how people give God so little of their life and time. Yet they demand so much from him. Hallelujah. We give God a fraction, just a fraction of our attention, our lives. And then we sit back and wonder, Lord, why is my life, Lord, like so, so, so person's own? 
And God is saying, this person has given me all. Hallelujah. For as long as there was no more vessel, the oil stopped flowing. So make sure you write, pay attention to the things that are taught. It will build you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. James 1, 22. Did you hug one another? While seated, just turn to your neighbor and hug the person left or right. We didn't do that. We believe in love. Do it. Don't look at me. Some of you are frowning as if it's a curse. Hug one another. At least this is what we do now in, in lieu of holy kiss. <laughs> Hallelujah. One day, I remember some years ago, I was in a relationship seminar and they asked me, they said, is there holy kiss in the church of God? Ah. I told them I want to be your friend. Don't ask me those questions. No. Hallelujah. At least I know that you can kiss a very small lady and a very old woman. <laughs> if you truly love the person, you can kiss a very small lady like my sweetheart. Yeah? She always receives a kiss from me. And then very old. If you really love that old woman with agape, you should have no problem kissing the old woman and say, Mommy, nah. How did we get here? <laughs> James 1. <laughs> but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man beholding his natural face in a mirror. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way. And immediately forget what manner of man he was. Can you imagine? But whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth in it. Take note. He looks into the perfect law of liberty and he continues in it. He said, he be not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word. What's the reward? This kind of man shall be blessed in his deed. Hallelujah. Now, there are lots of believers who, as they begin to walk with God, they start saying, Lord, why am I not receiving results in my life? Why is brother so-so-so or sister so-so-so receiving results? And I've been born again for a long time. I come to church, I pray, and I fast. Hallelujah. But then, I'm not seeing... The manifestation of God's word in my life. I'm not seeing evidences that show that I am truly walking with the word. And that the word is working in my life. Hallelujah. And several times people send me text messages and say I love God. I have done everything I know how to do. I mean this thing is either the word is not working. I can't explain it. I've done everything I know how to do. I've prayed. I've fasted. You know, I read scripture, I even bought books. And I'm even doubting now whether this thing works or not. Hallelujah. Tonight I trust that God will help us examine that truth and then we'll pray. The Bible says, James 1 verse 22. Anyone with Amplified? James 1 22. I'm seeing a woman outside. You're holding a child. You came with a baby. I think you wore traditionals. Please, can I have that woman? Outside. You came with a baby. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. You came with a baby. Please, when you find that person, let her come. See a woman with a baby. Let's continue. James 1, 22. 
amplified. Who is there? Can you help her with a mic, please? I like the rendition. I'm still seeing the woman, a woman with a baby, child, small child. Not really a newborn baby, like a few months. I think it may be maybe some years, a year or so. Yes. But be doers of the word. Obey the message. Listen. But be doers of the word. Obey the message. Okay? And not merely listeners to it. And not merely listeners to it. Okay? Betraying yourselves. Betraying yourselves. Into deception. Into deception. By reasoning contrary to the truth. By reasoning contrary to the truth. It says obeying the message. See, a lot of people wonder why they don't see results in their lives. And they love God. They come to church. They are sincere people. Hallelujah. But over a long period of time, nothing, nothing at all seems to work in their lives. They have scriptures in their mind. They can quote scriptures. And then they wonder why these things are not working. And the Bible begins to give us an insight into what may be the possible cause. It says what? Be ye doers. Say after me, doers. Practitioners of the word. He said, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. That means in a crowd like this, there are people who can be hearers. Oh, glory. I'm hearing this word. I believe it. I take it. I receive it. Hallelujah. The Bible calls them hearers. But then it is possible that as the word of God is coming, you are hearing. But there is no willingness in you to practice the principles and live by the word. It says, do not be hearers only, deceiving yourselves. In other words, the, Bob, the Bible calls it self-deceit. Hallelujah. You are listening to the word just like everyone. You can quote the scripture just like everyone. You know the songs. You know all the religious cliches. But the Bible says that they are not practitioners of the word. They don't live by it. They are not committed to walking in the truth at all costs of the word and the bible calls that if you are a victim of that the bible says you have been deceiving yourself so it is possible for a man to deceive himself and there are many christians many pastors many members many great men and women of god who are living in deceit deceiving themselves they love god but they are not practitioners of God's word. Can I tell you something? The performance of the word is for doers. Faith is not just hearing what God has said. Faith is doing what God says. Without an action, without a doing, there is no faith. I'm telling you, many believers, born again, tongue-talking believers, are not practitioners of kingdom principles. They know it. And, and you see, look up, please. Look up. The most dangerous thing that can happen to any man is for you to know certain truths and not practice it. Because anytime you hear someone teaching it, there is that hardness you already know. Hallelujah. You already know. But it's not working in your life. It's not producing results. That means something is wrong. He said, meditate on these things. Give yourself holy to them and it leaves you with a promise it says so that thy profiting will appear unto all so could it be that we have many believers who hear the word mp3s all the time in their ears and not many are committed to the practice of god's word you truly do not believe the word if you don't practice any part of scripture you have not been practicing is the part you don't believe. No matter how you try to convince yourself. According to God's principles, you have believed a thing truly if you are living by it. 
So you see that we have many Christians but few believers. Not many people truly believe the word. Hallelujah. Look up. For those that are students, when ABU brought out your timetable, did you believe that timetable? How did you prove that you believed it? When your lecture was 8 o'clock, were you sleeping? You got up and went to class believing. You didn't see the person who pasted the timetable. Correct? But you were so convinced. If you just lay down there and say, ah, my timetable is out. When they brought out your exam timetable, how did you prove you believed it? People jam-packed the library. That's faith in the administration. So many people now say, I love the Lord. Lord, I love you. The urgency in your spirit during exams tells you how much you trust that those people will not change that timetable and that you had better be serious. Are you listening to me? But when it comes to practicing God's word, there is no urgency, there is complacency, and people just hope that maybe it will work. It tells on the way we respond and live by the word of God. So we have people tithing today, not tithing tomorrow. We have people loving today, not loving tomorrow. We have people studying the word and not studying. And then you ask people why. And they tell you, look, if you really know what is happening in my life now, you even thank God that I'm still born again. <laughs> Hallelujah. And you expect people to sympathize with you. And he said, look, see, just forget to, it's just God that is helping me right now. <laughs> Can I tell you something, friends? Listen, if you bend from living by God's principles, it will not be an excuse for God to just see your tears and bring blessings into your life. You will suffer ruthlessly for it. If everyone else is practicing what is not of God, and you say, Tor, will I stand alone? You will suffer. Are you listening to me? If you claim God's word is not working and you leave it, then what else are you practicing? Hallelujah. Many believers truly do not live by the word of God. The Bible says, be ye doers. This looks very simple. Very, very simple. But this is the reason why so many people will never walk in certain realms of the reality of the kingdom life. Because we truly do not live by the word. Deceiving yourselves. Hallelujah. Many believers, many hearers, we have all kinds of tapes, different bookstores. Oga Jordan is here. His bookstore is full of tapes and books. There are many of us who buy books and buy tapes every week. When they go to your room, they see series of different men of God. Different series. Hallelujah. Say, have you read this book? You say, yes, Abba, chapter 1 talks about this, chapter 1. And then you see the person is chorusing the solution for his predicament, yet not changed by it. Hallelujah. Have you seen such kind of people? They can tell you. When they are counseling somebody, you, you hear them speak. Ask them. You can attach someone who just got born again to them. And they will train the person and you become a wonder in the spirit. But they themselves will never rise beyond that level. But they understand the spiritual principles. You can send them on evangelism. They will bring back souls. They can do great motions. But to live and get personal success in their lives as a result of the word of God, they will never do it. That's why Paul said, let it not be that after I have preached, I myself will be a castaway. That means it is possible. There are many men of God who are victims of the things they teach. They stand on stage and attack immorality as if they don't know who a lady is. But you search their lives and see. Every hotel already knows them. Doers of the word. There are many preachers who teach on tithing and giving. They themselves don't give. The reason why they are still rich is because people are sowing into their lives. 
So they don't know the difference. They don't live by the word of God. Many people say, okay, speak the word and pray. But the leaders themselves don't pray. Hallelujah. You go to a man of God's house, you see him cross his leg and he's watching football match. He gives you the timetable. See, have you not known that the Bible says there is no man that warreth who will entangle himself with civilian affairs? You see why certain people do not have personal success in their lives? Because the truth is, they have not come to a point where they love God genuinely. And are willing to live by his principles. There are men of God who declare fasting and prayer. And while the people are fasting, they are eating stockfish. Nobody knows. You just see them come. You see, we can fake every kind of thing on stage. But can I tell you something? Just as light and darkness cannot be mistaken, one day it will show whether you are standing in God's word or not. Hallelujah. Every time I pick up my Bible, I tell the Lord, am I studying simply because of the responsibility of ministry? Is it because I must prepare a message for God's people? Or is it because people will come for counseling? Hallelujah. Then you see people come and they stand to cast out devils and embarrass themselves there. That's where the robber will hit the road. I bind you in the name of Jesus Christ. And they go back with untold predicaments as a result of daring hell with a hypocritical spirit. It's easy to stand before people. I take authority over this devil. And then the man cannot sleep in the night in his house. He will call somebody and say, can you just come and stroll around? Because even him, he's not convinced that the name of Jesus works. It just so happened that he was used and the demon left. I'll never forget in secondary school when we prayed for one interesting boy that used to sleep on top of my bunk. And the devils came out. Oh, you, 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 come, you need to come and see us. When evening came, Bible said, and when evening came, that was when Jesus was healing. But when evening came for us, that was when it became a serious concern. People started singing praise and worship, strolling out of their rooms, moving to the, and they took light. I didn't sleep there. You watch people teach about certain kingdom principles and when you see them you say my god look at the the unwavering audacity but then they don't believe it someone teaches on tithing and says i assure you if you don't tithe you will do this this person ask him in all sincerity you see we are not in the old testament otherwise many men of god would have been humbled by now many of us i'm not just saying them you know now God's grace is everybody can do everything. Whether you are tightening or not, who will know? It's just you and God. But can I tell you something? A day will come, the fruit of the tree will show. Are you listening to me? Many believers, many of us don't pray. You don't pray. The only time you really have to pray is when you come for koinonia. So when you are praying, you just feel that spirit you felt last week. Bah, 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 bah. And you are feeling guilty as you are praying. You know that you have neglected your secret place. Some of us rub our Bibles on our bed. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus Christ. I declare safe journey to Koinonia. And then you are leaving. It's not a priority. It's not a priority. It only happen if they say, all right, in uh, maybe... Uh, protocol or worship or any department, you are the one who will lead prayers. Then you fast and pray and believe that all heavens are open. Only just to perform that religious ritual and then you leave. But can I tell you something? You can deceive man, but in the realm of the spirit, there is no deceit. A lot of people say you cannot deceive God. You cannot even deceive demons. You see, because in the realm of the spirit, everything lays bare. I hope you know that. You can deceive men in this realm. But I tell you the truth, in the realm of the spirit, everything lays bare. Ask the sons of Sceva. Paul was doing certain things and one day, the Bible says, they gathered, come sir. They carried somebody, sons of Sceva, plenty of them. 
and they came and they quietly locked the door. They said, we adjure you in the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches. Is that not the real Jesus? And the demon says, today is today. You will know that we have been watching you. He said, Jesus, I know. In other words, I see them in the secret. We know that they are living by the principles of God's word. And so we can attest. See, if you don't, if you don't run away from God in the secret, he will not disappoint you in the open. He said, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. He said, but who are you? He said, since you want to pretend, it's time for the whole community to know that this anointing is fake. And the Bible says, that spirit beat all of them, one, stripped off their clothes, two, and drove them out for the whole city to see. So imagine the men of God in that city naked. What happened? Not accident, not bomb blast, no nothing. You say a victim of a... Uh, <laughs> you just imagine miracle service. And then just imagine all of us running. Me and Bishop stand. I say let's stand in unity. What happened? Oh, but that's what happened. That's what the Bible says happened. Do you, do you think those guys will be the same? They will first run away from that environment. And go and say what minute these things? I thought it was so easy. When you see a man who is living by the word doing some things, you think it's so easy and cheap. And then you come with the absence of God's presence and you try to do the same thing and you receive a rude shock in your life. Be ye doers. Be ye doers. Are you a doer of the word? Are you truly practicing the principles that you know? Or do you just say, oh, I know, I know, at least I, I know, God knows. Are you a practitioner of the word? Hallelujah. There are many men of God who teach about giving. They are as stingy as anything. They don't give anybody anything. Anything. If ever they give, it's from what they gave them. You don't need faith to do that one. It came as a gift. And then you give it. Hallelujah. This is very important. Are you a practitioner of God's word? We teach on character. We teach on the anointing. We teach on certain principles. There have been so many messages that have come from this ground. I told you that some years ago, God asked me to do something. That's a customized dealing between me and the Holy Spirit. For one week, I was reading, chewing, devouring any book and any tape I find. Whether it's relevant to me or not, I just wanted to grow. Studying the Bible, reading chapters upon chapters, books upon books in a day. And then one time, the Lord told me for the next one week, I shouldn't open my Bible. I went back to those notebooks that I had been jotting. And the Lord told me if I were practicing up to 10% of the things that were there, my life would have changed. And I was ashamed of myself because I know God cannot lie. Many of you are holding the solutions to your life and destiny in these books that you keep bringing week after week. You do not respect what you wrote with your own hands. You cried on the day you were writing it. Somebody even gave you a handkerchief and you clean and you quickly wrote it. But you are not living by it. You cried that day as if you will live. They say make commitments. And before they said anything, you were the first to go down on your knees. But after that. You see, that's why, honestly, honestly, I'm not carried away when people just kneel down or lie down or roll. I'm not saying don't do that. But there's too much emotion in the church. Too much emotion. And we men of God are consoled whenever there are emotions because we feel, ah, the people are really getting it. The power of God is flowing. Not necessarily so. If I sing a very nice song now, whether the name of Jesus is there or not, some of you will start crying. You are just emotional. He will just remind you of maybe one, your children's choir song, something, and you just start crying. It doesn't mean you are being changed. It's just simple memory of the past.
Very few believers. See, every time I pray to God, I lie down and I say, Lord, help me. I cannot boast that I'm practicing every single part of the word, but help me. This must be your attitude. It's not just the truth you know. It's not just what you've had. What are you doing about it? There are many of you that give koinonia messages to your friends and your family members. Powerful messages that can get them out of their predicaments. They collected it, put it in their laptops. They've not listened to it. Some of you have all the koinonia messages, including last week's one. How many have you listened to? There are people who are always collecting messages. Collecting everything. Do you have this Abba, Jerry Savelle? I have this. You see sections. And there's nothing that is being changed in their lives. Nothing. Not their character. Not any result. The reason, hear me, very simple but profound, is that many of us are listeners, but we are not practitioners. Hallelujah. I remember somewhere in Joss, they were doing orientation for Jerusalem pilgrims. Those who were going to go to Jerusalem. And you know, they have some time of just encouragement and for some Bible studies. After teaching them about the significance of visiting the Holy Land and the impact it should create, they were giving them warnings and they said no drinking. And one old man was just looking at them while they were talking. He didn't say anything. He was just looking at them. And later when it was time for people to comment, just say anything, AOB, the guy said, well, this is my own issue. I won't go and buy beer in the Holy Land, but if I see it, I won't let it spoil. You see that? Now, do you think that person will ever walk in the fullness of what God has destined? No. That's how some of us are. I won't buy a cigarette, oh, for instance. But, if someone offers me, even God knows. I won't go and look for any lady. But whoever makes a mistake of coming to my house, even God knows that it's not with my leg I used and went. See, and it's amazing how people make these confessions and they, they are happy. People smile and then they feel very fulfilled. Let me tell you something. If you are not a practitioner of the word, you will be frustrated twice. Let me tell you the first frustration. The first frustration is because you have endured too much. Secondly, only to find out that your endurance is in vain because you were deceiving yourself. You see that? So, someone who was not practicing the principles of God, who had been looking at you and been prophesying your doom, in the future it will truly happen because you have been deceiving yourself. The Bible says, be ye, it says, do not just be hearers, but doers. Be doers, not just hearers, deceiving yourself. How many of us here have been deceiving ourselves? Tonight, God is really examining us. How many of us? There are, may, there are very few of us that truly put the teachings we receive to work. That's why there are very few people that have results. But God wants everyone to walk in the manifestation of the word of God in your life. That with time, something should begin to show. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. For instance, there may be some of us that still have all kinds of godless and useless musics, videos, and different things in our phones. You are born again. Hallelujah. And all those pornographic jargons are still on your phone thanks to blackberry you can ping your destiny left and right from one person to the other receive things you should not receive and then facebook again these things are nice if you use them well twitter we have all kinds of media um, outlets that help people not to live by the principles of the word so you have a man of God who loves God. He's preaching the gospel. But still has in one secret place in his folder. Passworded. All kinds of pornographic jargons. And the problem is they will never admit they need help. You see the point. It's a different thing if you are struggling with a challenge and you admit and say Lord somebody help me. But where people just laugh. And then they come out and do all kinds of things. 
and then you sit down and they wonder why God is not bringing members to their church. God is not bringing increase. They wonder why. And then they begin to criticize others that have this result. They say, forget about them, Jerry. They must be putting their hands somewhere. Let me tell you something. Hear me and hear me very well. The Bible says, nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. Men may not know, but God knows those who are his. Hallelujah. Practitioners of the word. I listened to a message by Johnson Suleiman, a minister's conference that broke me in a very serious way. We'll be playing it for our, our Bible students. Very powerful. And this guy began to speak about, not, I'm not saying this to criticize. Many men of God bishops, popular people you know in this country who deal on drugs. That's how they make their money. Millionaire clubs of pastors, apostles, prophets, bishops. Hallelujah. Currently, it was told that in NDLEA, drug law, there are about 230 something pastors that are under police custody for drugs. Some of them are your pastors. Who is deceiving who? Hallelujah. John Suleiman said he went to South Africa. When he went to South Africa, they asked him, they said, Kai, it's very cold, though. Do you need a warmer? The guy said, no, the AC is okay. We can adjust. He said, no, we are not. We need a warmer. He said, what do you mean a warmer? He said, a lady now. After the burden of standing to minister, Bible says, and when Abraham's wife died, they brought a lady called Keturah. So to have somebody who will come and comfort you. And he looked at the man and said, what is all this? He said, the pastors in Nigeria do it. He showed some permanent ladies that belong to many of the men of God you see and celebrate. They caught a bishop at customs office with his bishop this thing. You know their shoes are customized. They opened the shoe and saw kilograms of cocaine. And in the bishop's staff, kilograms of cocaine. Are you listening to me? And a pastor who was called 100 Bibles. 100 Bibles. In each of them, there were wraps of cocaine. Nigerians. People who stand and lift up their hands. And wonder why God honors some people and turns away from some people. Tonight is a message to re-examine ourselves. Are you interested in practicing God's word at all costs? John Suleiman said he was on his way going with his books and they stopped him. He said they stopped him. And they said, please, we know you are a great man, but we'll probe you. When they finished, the customs officer called him and said, are you embarrassed? I'm sorry. But right now, the situation with Nigerian pastors requires that we check a lot of things. You find out how many preachers have married abroad and have wives and children that nobody knows. Whenever the woman says, Oh, we shout, or just get more money from building project or whatever, and just try and say, You said, keep quiet. Nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord standeth sure. Are you a practitioner of God's word? Hallelujah. He said he was in a hotel and a lady came. Just knocked and said, you have a parcel from the receptionist. As soon as he opened the door, that was how she just stripped herself. He said he was almost tempted to sleep with her. This is a sincere man of God. Because we live in a world full of men of God who exalt themselves. And try to pretend all kinds of garbages while they are dying in the secret. The Bible says, he who conceals his sin shall not be delivered. He shall not prosper. Hallelujah. He said he didn't know when he turned and started shouting in tongues. That was the only help he could get. And the lady just closed the door. Who know? Who know? He would have slept with her quietly. And his protocol will receive him in Nigeria. The great man. Whereas you have no identity. In the realm of the spirit. 
Don't be surprised when they tell you there are pastors going to hell. Hallelujah. He said, call. How much of the word of God do you believe and are living? He said one of his sons in the ministry, he went to preach for him in Lagos. Within one year, when he started, when he saw the crowd as a spiritual man, he said he called him after the meeting and the son gave him a brand new, Bible students, don't worry, you watch the video. It's a minister's conference, won't give people around, but we will watch it. Hallelujah. Gave him a brand new car to a jeep. Most men of God. Are you not surprised that with the evil happening, most of the people who should talk are not saying anything? They are just keeping quiet. Come on now. Jesus said, the one who dipped his hand with me in this pot is the one who is not innocent. When you have dipped your hand with somebody, will you bite the finger that is feeding you? Hallelujah. It's sad, but I must tell you this. It's sad. I did a little study, and I'm glad he said it, about the concept. Please, I'm not criticizing any pastor or anything. Please, don't send me any text messages telling me jargons. Hallelujah. But the guy who ordained the bishops, his name is El Pock, and he was the one who ordained Idahosa, ordained, and you know, many of the men of God we know today. Are you listening to me? And that guy, was living in a lot of, as at the time, he was living in a lot of sexual perversion. This is the reason why most of the bishops and the great men of God, they find themselves lost and materialism are two things they cannot explain. See, that's why the Bible says, lay hands suddenly on no man so that you will not be partakers of their sins. You just hear one great bishop just got up. Ah, he's gay. Now you try, you, and you are now thinking. I always pray to God and say, Lord, as I stand to minister to your people, let me not transfer a faulty spirit. Once you see a whole congregation of people manifesting certain widespread characteristics, the leaders are not to be spared. I, I tell you the truth. The leaders are not to be spared. Hallelujah. I told you about my encounter and worry. When a lady came to knock my door by 1 p.m. Hallelujah. What she wore, it was too short. Where's my waist? This is it. This watch, this is what she wore. And then it had a it had a zip. Yes, she lifted it. I mean, she was proud. When I opened the door, ah! She said, Sorry, I'm looking for the 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 uh, receptionist in this place. I didn't know what to say. I said, are you not seeing my room number? I'm a guest here. In the night. Quietly. Who will know? Said I should come and help her go and walk a guy from my room. Come on now. When I jammed that door and I locked it. I will leave Zari and come to worry. Kill my destiny and come back. See, when these things happen. That is when you will know whether you love God or not. That's why the Bible says for you to prepare. He said if your strength fails you in the day of battle, your strength is small. If you turn aside in the day of battle, there are too many people who are pretending like they are living the reality of God's word. Back to that story about that his son. And he saw the increase. After he gave him the khakis, he said, hold on. Apostle John Suleiman and his wife called him and he said, please talk to us. I'm seeing increase in my own ministry, but not like this. This does not carry the signature of God. What are you doing? The guy said, well, you know, the blessings of God and some of the, princip the principles that a daddy like you have taught us. He said, no. He told him, go out. He called his wife. He said, madam, you know that I see. Talk to me. And she began to tell him, there is a popular herbalist in this country. I won't mention names of things. He said he took the woman there and they told him that they should bring a six-year-old child together with a customized mic, just like my own here, that nobody else will hold. Listen to me. And when that sacrifice was made, 
they said anywhere around lagos if your ears can hear that mic whether your leg likes it or not it will enter that church and sit down there so ministry is expanding and many sons just come papa receiving demons and spirits and now he got a seed of a jeep and he gave him john suleiman said he said even those who backslided did not go to the devil they just fell short of god's grace is it that bad that you went he said from today i delete your number from my phone i have nothing to do with you again do you know how many men of god go for meetings and they go with ridiculous pas that nobody can explain let me see one pretty lady annie come so i'm going i'm going to where now mina and i just drop i tell them please book two rooms or one large room anyone can serve two or one large room and then i say she's my pa hallelujah and when you see the seriousness in my life you will even believe think i'm seeing every lady like trees This is an example, oh. Media. It's an example. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then what happens? In the name of PA and useless, stupid, satanic manifestations of lack of self control, what happens? So they have different people in different spots. Just sleep with that sharp, sharp, and then. They just clap for the man. Comes to sit down, he stands up. And you see people falling under the anointing. He's genuinely anointed, but he has lost the presence. See, Samson woke up from sleeping with a prostitute. Did you read that in your Bible? What did he do? Immediately, the Bible didn't say he prayed to God. Immediately, he got up, removed the gate of his city. Because they said they wanted to enter and kill him. So he said, let me remove the gate for you. He removed the gate and kept it on a mountain. That you are compromising on kingdom things and God is merciful is not an endorsement. Are you listening to me? This is what a lot of people don't know. May God deliver us from a life of falsehood. And bring us into a point where we truly practice the word of God. There are many men of God who stand on stage and say, I don't owe God one night. And God says, you owe me three years. Three years, you're a liar. You are shouting, I don't owe God anyone. It's not true. It's not true. They don't believe in giving. They don't give. They just have the way of getting money. They can cook up any ridiculous project that nobody can account for. And you know, the way men of God run ministry, especially, I'm telling you, especially those who are not transparent, they run it in such a way that nobody can question them. These are prophetic instructions. These are this and that. So you, sister, please, after Koenonia, let me see you in my room. It's a prophetic instruction. What nonsense is that? Who is deceiving who? Then when she comes, you say, you say, don't you smile, Abba. <laughs> Is that not what some of your lecturers do? They look very serious. Come to my office. When you come, they say, ah, ah, relax. Who is beating you? <laughs> Those are indications of perversion. Pack your load and run away. No matter what it will cost you. Doers of the word. Doers. Whether anybody is watching you or not. You are packaging your tithe and saying, Lord, you know I honor you and I believe this. Whether you are alone or you are true, you see a challenge in your life that is questionable. You don't sit there and just say, wow, I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. You seek for help quick, quick. I've had the opportunity to pray for a lot of ministers and I do that with all humility. When I see certain people come and say, look, I'm a man of God, but I'm struggling with this and that. I tell him, I say, look, we are all products of God's grace. But for your openness and sincerity, the Lord will bless you. But there are all kinds of people who will sit down and believe they are the Alpha and the Omega. Everything about God is in them. Are you listening to me, please? So what aspect of the word have you not made up your mind? 
to live by and practice. I will not be surprised if there are still ladies in this place that get up to go and spend weekend in one guy's house. You are here, you are looking at me. Say, to won't I go? He's the only one now. The Christian brothers are not coming. Which nonsense are you saying? Who do you want now to come and meet this kind of unfertile soil? Who do you want to come with this kind of life? The brother who is praying and sweating in your presence and praying for his destiny. Look at what you are living. I'll not be surprised if there are some of you who still tell your parents lies and inflate figures of school fees and the rest. Now you laugh because we have a church that massages things you should address. Just say, forget that, lie. don't make the people feel guilty. What nonsense is that? You don't find that in Koinonia. By the grace of God, we will attack whatever needs to be attacked in love until we present a bride that is worthy of God's power and glory and grace. Hallelujah. There are many of you that once situation becomes a bit uncomfortable, just a bit, you can shake like a leaf and compromise at anything that comes. You are not a doer of the word. Tonight the Lord is asking you, are you ready to come back to a point where you truly begin to practice the word? Whether you are supervised or not. I always tell people the true proof of obedience is when you are given the opportunity to disobey. Hallelujah. If, come Tosin. If Tosin is my daughter and she's staying under my roof, you know the kind of person I am. You know there are some things I won't tolerate. I cannot say Tosin is a nice lady because I'm there. Are you listening to me? The day I leave her alone and she has the opportunity to do anything she wants to do. But she says, I have come to take the word of my father as my own word. I'm not doing it because of him. At that point, they are the practitioners of God's word. God bless you. There are some of you, the only thing that is keeping you right now is because we are watching you. Hallelujah. One day someone came and said, pray for me. I want to go abroad. I said, why? He said, truly, I just know that God wants me to be there. I wanted to pray for the person and the Lord told me, don't waste your time. This is not my desire. This person is just going to go and die abroad. Some of you want to go abroad. <laughs> First day you go abroad and stand and you see ladies almost nude moving. And you find out that nobody is even concerned. Ah, you just say, are you, are you serious? And I'm so happy my father's phone has spoiled. When you are not supervised, are you going to stand for truth? Do you know that there are some people that get back into things like drinking simply because maybe their group of friends are there. They say, don't fall our hands, I beg. And the guy will sit down and say, ah, just turn around and saw pretty lady. Say, oh, God, let me just do it. This is one last time. I'll ask for forgiveness later on. Are you ready to stand and live by the word? Can you be different? When people are bribing and doing other things, say, just give me my own. I won't be against you, but I won't talk. Because the way I'm seeing some of us, God is keeping you right now. It's just God that is tying your leg. You are like foxes. If they set fire and leave you, you can't do anything. That's why God has refused to expose some people into certain levels of blessings. You think he's a devil. It's because you are not ready. Hallelujah. There are many of us, the day you hold one million of your own, not that your father gave you that you should keep it for him, your, your own, that nobody knows, only you. Ha! You can book the best room in TJ Palace. You can charter a car from here and anywhere. You can take a flight, just drop in Lagos and go back. You can do anything you want to do. At that point, you find out three days, four days, you've not prayed. You say, God, no problem, we'll talk. Because there's no pressure again. It's time to begin to ask yourself, are you pretending over your passion for God or do you genuinely mean it? 
Are you just coming for koinonia because you feel kai? Let me come. I don't want anybody asking me any question. Did you come or not? Let me just kukuma come. I love the Lord on stage, anywhere. I love him with all my heart. And I'm committed to living by the truths of God's word that I know nothing else. I don't care what level of honor comes. And I want that to be your resolve tonight. Let me show you another scripture. Thank you, Jesus. John 13. John 13. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. John 13, verse 17. John 13, verse 17. Let's read it together if you're there. One to read. If you know these things, happy are you if you do them. So it's not enough to know. Jesus is encouraging them. He said, if you know these things, you will be happy when you do them. If you know the principles that can bring a blessed life, happy are you. There are some of you, you have your remaining exams now. You trusted God last year. It came out a way you don't like. He said, God, now I'm wiser. I won't get punished like a child again. Now I'm a man. I pray for a generation of men and women who are uncompromising. There are many of you, nobody can vouch for you. Hallelujah. There are some of you here, nobody can vouch for you. You can't beat your chest and say, Kai, I know the, the Bible says, God said, I know Abraham that he would teach his children, the, he, would, he would raise his children in the way of the Lord. Let me ask you a question, all of you here. Who can speak for you if you are not there and say, I truly know that this person is a Christian? Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? There are many of you that nobody can speak for you. When they just ask and say, this guy, say, ah, in this life, you don't talk for people. Once you see people talking like that, they, they are already answering the question. Hallelujah. They say, sorry, want to appoint this person one post and what do you, they, ah, no, just leave that position vacant there, please. Don't give God headache. We have enough challenges in this church. See? Many of us are not dependable. You don't, your, 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 re, your resolve on God's word cannot be verified. You love God, but we are not yet sure if a guy starts meandering around you, whether you stand. It's amazing what people do in the presence of certain opportunities. Amazing. Hallelujah. I know a lady one time, some years ago, she wanted her school fees desperately. Then we used to meet at um, chapel. And the girl started attending ENI meetings actively. Apparently, she had that. It's time for payment of school fees. Every time this lady would greet me, immediately after the program, ah, I said, Lord, thank you. You are doing great things in life in this place. As soon as this girl got this school fees, I didn't see her again. Till I'm serious. About a, a year later, when it was about the same time, she just sent a text. She said, it's been a while. I miss you. I miss you. I said, me. Abba. Judas kissed Jesus, took him to hell. Nobody will kiss me and take me to hell. That's how many of us are with God. You just thank God. Hallelujah. I'm sharing this testimony. God is doing great things in my family. And at that point, especially our parents, you see that there is a sense of your father who has not done devotion in 12 years. We say, everybody wake up. 
Wake up, family. We are going to give God glory this morning. You just know that one arrears that has been pending has suddenly come. Later on, you wake him and he says, the day you enter this room again. And you are now asking, so who is deceiving who? That's how many of us are. When you came in the session, you were very excited. Hallelujah. Very excited. You are the one pointing fingers at people and saying, these guys are not praying. What's wrong? Pray for them. Now you are the one they are praying for. Why? Every time they see you strolling around Paladin, they say, one guy told me on Facebook he loves me. See, the things people do, that's why it's good. Hear me, brothers and sisters. That's why it's good to let God examine your heart. Don't set an exam for yourself and mark yourself. Give yourself a organized speech and price for yourself and say, I'm growing. Hold on. Let God be the one to work on you. But there must be a resolve. There are many of us today, the way we are pursuing God, if we don't get what we want from God, it's, it's possible you will just wave and say, God, I worked with you for five years. Everybody has seen now that I've, I've tried. Bless my father, you didn't bless him. Bless my mother, you didn't bless him. Bless everybody. Leave me alone. Just bless them. You didn't even bless them. Why will I stay? You say I will backslide. Look at who is going to suffer. The throne is made of gold. Everything is made of gold. You are the one suffering here. And People who live these kinds of lives get angry at those who are paying the price to live by the word of God. Because the moment you see that there is a sister who is standing and saying by the grace of God, I'm going to stand. I will wait for the will of God. I'm developing myself in virtue and character. Say, eh, just say all of us are bad now. Who, did they talk to you? Our presence is judging what you are doing. Please don't uh, pray. Let's just know that us, we are sinners. What is all that? Or you just see a guy reading plenty books. He's read seven books in a week. You have been sleeping and snoring. You just wake up. Your saliva is almost, it has poured on the bed. It's almost floating now down. I just clean your face. And you hear yourself talking foolishly and he's talking like a leader. And then he says, eh, must you say it? Abba, who is not growing too? you will always hate those who are doing what you are not doing always you look at broke people the day they bless your father neighbors that used to laugh suddenly just get angry they just gather themselves and say ah ah hey, hey rain is falling no mouths that cannot drink gari is now taking butter you see all kinds of insinuative statements Whatever you are not doing, when you see someone doing it, it will judge you. You go around smokers and those who drink. Once they see you going to church, they just say, Ah, ah, Mother Mary, talk, pray for us. So they look like they are bold. Something is judging them. You calm them down and talk to them and they will tell you. They say, I don't like my life. But brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. Those who will receive rewards in this journey are those who are living. So ask yourself, are you frustrating yourself for nothing or you are truly practicing the word? Because it's going to be terrible if after 10 years of standing one leg in, one leg out, you find out that those who are truly committed are now walking in the blessings and you are still standing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have you seen those who they are inviting for a dinner, for instance? And someone who just heard from somewhere, you dress too, you come and stand like them. You say, you, what do you like? Me, I like, uh, I like cold uh, uh, juice. You are not invited. You are there talking. You can talk like them. Once it's time for the invitation, they say, brother, so, so, this way. And you start becoming uncomfortable. And you're just standing there and say, ah, so how are you? Are you sure your name was there? How did you know you were there? Because... You had been standing for long, but you were not part of it. Now, you didn't do other things. And by standing there, you were implicating yourself. Because you've already gisted with someone. You even say, we'll sit together. 
when we get the car, you're a very nice person. You talk smart. And then they say, last but not the least, sister, this, you are just standing there. I say, what is all this? Huh? I've been standing here for long. It's not where you invited. Did you show signs of concern? That's how many people who name the name of... Do you know that's how many of our parents got into trouble? Ask them. They'll tell you we did evangelism. Uh-huh. We did evangelism. Say, I, I was even president of, of my fellowship. That's not the issue. Did you practice the word of God that you were taught? They say, so, so great man. He was my friend. I was even praying with him. That's the deceit. You were praying, but did you believe it? Did you walk in the truth? Others were tithing. You were there pretending and telling lies. Now, when the cloud is full of rain for those people, what happens? Those who are not tithing, it doesn't come. And you are not telling people, bring bucket, oh, rain will come. They brought buckets and drums of water. You are waiting. Say, just hold on. It, it comes gradually. It has been, you have been waiting for 20 years. It won't come because you didn't do anything. I refuse to after committing myself to God. And then at the end, I will find out that I was only pretending. And there is nothing to show forth for it. Two more scriptures and we'll pray quickly. Hebrews 4 verse 1. I will show you from this scripture. Tonight's teaching is an admonition. Let us therefore fear lest a promise be left us of entering into his rest. Any of you should seem to come short of it too. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. He said, but the word that was preached did not profit them. Why? Not being mixed with faith in them that had it. Look up. So they had it. But what happened? It did not produce result. See, listen, let me tell you something. That's why you can have a crowd of people like this. And we are praying and releasing blessings. And you see some people lifting their hands, but they don't even believe. They are just wondering, will it really happen? How are we even sure this man of God is genuinely anointed? You are there arguing. Somebody is opening up his spirit. Next week, the person comes with a testimony. And I say, why is it that there are some specific people? I will find out this thing. Next Sunday, I'll come early and go and stand and see what media people are doing. That's the cynical spirits that people have as a result of not seeing results in their lives. The Bible says they had the word. The word of faith, the word of healing, the word of restoration, the word of prosperity, the word of godliness, the word of success, the word of increase. They had it. They jumped like everybody. They shook hands with everybody. They danced with everybody, but they did not practice it. Can I tell you something? One of the things I have found out in scripture is that beyond a man of God, beyond an anointing that you sit under, you are principally responsible for working out your salvation with fear and trembling. The Bible says, work out your salvation. Work it out. When the word is released, you receive it. There are some of you that have been here with terminal diseases. It's been for a while. And you're just laughing and saying, well, well, this and that. For some of you, probably, part of the reason why you are not even receiving is you don't even believe. See, let me advise you. Don't come here if you don't believe I'm a man of God. You are wasting your time. Did you know that it's possible for people to do that? You just come and sit down and watch and say, ah, ah. And this happens especially for elderly people. When they come and see us stand here, they say, ah, these are young people. And, and, and you watch them sitting in their predicament. Look, let me tell you something. When it comes to the things of the spirit, drop your age, your title, your reputation, your educational status, whatever. And with meekness, you receive. That's the problem with a lot of people. Some of you have been calling some of your parents who have serious sicknesses to come. They say, ah, it's just youth. Hallelujah. I remember going, going to one house to go and pray for them. They've heard about me. They've listened to the messages. And when I went there, I saw the shock on the man's face. Apparently, he thought he was his age mate coming. 
when I came in, he couldn't believe it. Ah. So he sat down. And then for him to talk, he was just merry-go-rounding. He was wondering. Because some of his children are older than me. You know, he was talking, hey, how have I degraded myself? now? And I sat down there. And with all humility, I was pitying the man. I said, who is suffering? I was sitting peacefully at home. You didn't let my phone rest. Now I have come. This guy was suffering something. He didn't want to say it. It was a medical condition. It was me and him. He could not speak. These are things I have had for years. It's amazing how some people come to look and they just look and they say this and that. A man is suffering from a particular... He just sits down and he just... Who are you deceiving? Every time William Branham wanted to minister to people, he would look at them and say, do you take me? Do you receive me as a prophet of God? People would say yes, instantly. The vistas of their life will be opened up to him and he'll begin to speak to them. One day, a particular man of God called me. He saw in a dream that I was ministering to him and he called he had been struggling with certain things, to real challenges in his life. And when he called, he said, well, God showed me this thing eh, and I wanted us to rob minds together. I told him, keep your pride. I'm not going to pick a call and rob mine. You need, you need deliverance. And this is what God has sent for you to be done. If you are ready, come. Don't sit down there and say, we are not robbing minds. Many of you will never admit. See, it, this is not bragging. This is not bragging. This could probably be the reason why some of you are not receiving any blessings. You see the protocol people stand and say, Abba, Sonny, Abba, you are looking at me, okay, Sonny, we entered car together with you. You don't know difference. My parents suffered for years. I was still anointed and liberating many families. For years. It grieved my spirit. Did you know that in all my years of ministry, I've only ministered in my state. Aside from crusades we organized, I've only ministered once in my own state. There are few places in this country I've not gone to, but in my own state, only once. You see that? This can be reasons why people don't receive. From the day, see, this is not human worship. By the grace of God, we respect. It's childishness. If an elderly person, someone older than you can give birth to you, is respecting your grace and you are now bragging, you are a child. There is not demonic possession. The, the remedy is just to grow up. But let me tell you something. You must open up your heart and receive. Praise the Lord. Are you receiving something? This could be probably part of the reason why some of you are not blessed. Every time you are receiving the word, you are just looking and saying, oh yeah, yeah, again. And you are remaining where you are. The anointing reacts to honor. brother. When God has put a man over your life, he's not your friend. He's not your colleague. It is in an attempt to express this point that certain men of God raise themselves. But the Bible says, do not exalt yourself more highly than you ought to be. There are people I will never joke with. I can be smiling with them. But the moment I want to beckon in the capacity of their anointing and call, I bring myself to my proper position. This is what some of you have been missing. Hallelujah. Sometimes we give spiritual instructions here to help you. Read a particular book. Pray. Throughout this week, go and you just laugh. See, your adherence to instructions. It says, my son, pay attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. Do not let them depart from out of thy heart. Thy eyes, keep them in the midst of your heart. He said, they are life to those who find and help to their flesh. This is the reason why some of you are not receiving results. You're not participating in the things that can build you because you don't believe. But tonight I pray that God will give us the heart to be doers of the word. Not just hear us deceiving ourselves because in the end you are the one who will suffer it alone. I believe the word of God. 
I believe in you. I believe in your word and the power of its truth. I believe in you. So I lay down my cross that the cross might be found in you. I believe in you. I believe in your word and the power of its truth. I believe in you. So I lay down my cause that the cross might be found in you. I believe this word. We're going to pray in the next five minutes. Listen, and I don't know how you're going to cry unto God, but you're going to tell him, Lord, I'm making up my mind. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hear the prayer point first. I'm making up my mind to be a doer of the word. You're going to honestly repent and say, Lord, I've not been tightened. I'm not faithful. See, when, when you are honest before God and you say, Lord, you are, not a you are not an unjust God, truly, I've not been obedient to your principles. You don't pray. You don't speak the word. We talk about speaking the word. Many of you just feel this is for children. Look at what your life is. Look at what your life is. Anything comes and goes. Hallelujah. But tonight we are going to pray. We are going to say, Lord, I'm not ready to tell lies again. I, I leave this aspect of the word, but I'm not serious in this aspect. Some of us is in the aspect of character. You can pray, you can fast, but character. You've never sat down to work on it. It's not an issue. Hallelujah. Some of us is love. Some of us is the spirit of excellence. We keep saying these things. You're not going to hear anything new. These are the principles that have made great people. But let me tell you something. Listen. There must be a resolve in your heart. God supplies the grace. But you are the one who will make the resolve. The Bible says the prodigal son came to himself. No preacher preached to him. The prodigal son did what? Came to himself. Some of us may need to come to ourselves today. And attack some things out of your life. Pornography, immorality, hallelujah, falsehood, every kind of thing that is not consistent with Christ. You're going to make up your mind and say, Lord, I'm going to live by your word. This is what your principle says. And no matter what it will cost me, I lay down pride. I Listen, see, look up. It's not difficult just resolve that you are going to be a genuine Christian. Is that too much for you? Is it too much for you to say I'm going to mean business with God? Every principle that I am taught with childlike faith I'm going to walk. See, listen. I remember one time I was teaching someone how to drive. This guy was learning. Before I finish saying something, he would say, I know, I know. I will say, okay, drive it, and I will turn. And you just do blunders. I know, I know. If you find yourself in that attitude, you are on your way to doom. There are some of us, that's what has caused you into trouble. I know, I know everything. I know, pray, I know, I know this, I know that. Shut up and sit down and learn. When I see people say things about me and I see certain people, great leaders in the body of Christ that I respect and I admire, and I see the dimensions they are operating in, I feel like a child and a toddler. And I maintain that posture of humility, accepting that there are so many things I need to learn and know, and I humble myself and take it. There are many of us, the last time you made progress in your life was years ago because everything you know. 
You are sinking. They are saying, give me your hand. You say, I know. Are you joking? I can swim. You are dying. Bring your hand for help. I know. That's how many people are. That's how many of our parents are. God has raised some of you as saviors, but every time you want to speak to them, I know. They are dying. I know. This is not an issue of medication. They've spent millions on the treatment. Get to a place where you will be free. I know. Don't worry. We have things under control. Run away from that demonic attitude. We're going to pray. Rise up on your feet. I hope someone receives something tonight. This message is preparing us for the miracle service. In the next five minutes, listen. In the next five minutes, I'd like us to, if you want to lie down, you want to cry instrumentalist, I want you to really play. We are going to cry unto God in the next five minutes and say, Lord, I've not been practicing the word in this aspect and this aspect. There's no demon stopping my progress. I'm the one. I must admit it. And you're going to pray. Lift your voice. Please don't look at anybody inside and outside. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, cry unto him. Say, Lord, I know many of the principles that would have brought me prosperity, that would have brought me grace, that would have brought me increase. I've not made up my mind to pay the price and live by these principles. Lift your voice and pray. Don't deceive yourself again. The Bible says, Be ye to us. Be ye to us. There are issues in your life you've been afraid of confronting. What you don't confront, you don't conquer. Lift your voice and pray. Say, Lord, I've not been praying for weeks. I've not been praying for months. I look like I'm a prayer warrior, but I've been deceiving myself. I've not given up wrong associations. I want to, but I've not given them up. Lift your voice and pray. I will not deceive myself. I vow to be a practitioner of kingdom principles no matter what it will cost you no matter what it will cost you we are praying inside and outside just five minutes Hallelujah. Listen. You know what rebellion is? Rebellion is the willful, perpetual, and continuous state of walking in non-compliance with the principles of God. Although you know, let me tell you something. If you don't do something about it, one day your life will be written Ichabod. The glory will rise gradually. For you will arise like Samson. The strength of many men have disappeared because they lack the stature to stay and continue in the spirit. Lift your voice and say, Lord, help me. Lift your voice and say, Lord, help me. We're rounding up. Make sure you're praying. Help me, help me, help me. I want to practice every truth that I know. That's the only evidence that you believe it. Challenge yourself tonight. Make a commitment tonight. Make a commitment tonight. Say I will practice every truth I know. Whatever truth I hear, I believe it. I receive it. I walk in the truth. Don't feel condemned. 
Don't feel condemned. You may be convicted, but don't feel condemned. God is always a faithful God. And he's willing to help you. One more minute, we're rounding up. Rakata kosoto pakata. Lepros ke pariketa. Pranto pres ke lebo shataya. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just one quick prayer point. You're going to pray and say, Lord, grant me grace to live and walk in the truth of God's word. No matter how hard it is that I walk in it until it becomes a habit. Until it becomes a habit. Whether it's tithing, whether it's speaking the word, whether it's your study of God's word, studying books that will develop you. You know these principles. Get the tapes, get the teachings. Share them again. Practice them. Lift your voice and cry for grace. Lord, release grace upon us. Grace, unwavering committer to walk by your principles. No matter what happens, you are faithful. You are not a man that you should lie. Not the son of man that you should repent. We can take you by your word. You are trustworthy. You are reliable. We need not trust any other thing. Hallelujah. Look up. Look up. See, many of you need to go back home and go and talk to some of your loved ones. All those, all those renewal covenants and those devilish things you go and do that they bring whatever prophet to your house. You know that those things are wrong. You must not walk in rebellion. It's time for you to demonstrate the sincerity of your committer. The things you used to do. You can't do it again and say you are the same. Don't just say I'm the righteousness of God. No! Let me tell you something. Listen to me. Listen to me. Even if Satan accesses a life, access was given to him. You will be ready to judge all disobedience when your obedience is complete. This message, as simple as it is this night, I pray that it will ring in your spirit. I pray that you will not just be emotional about it. Take action. Some of you will need to call some friends and tell them you've been nice, but I'm really sorry. We cannot continue again. We are not going the same place. What if they say I'm bad? That's the problem. You can't find yourself everywhere doing everything and say you are going somewhere. No, no. Great people don't behave like that. You've got to be different. It may cost you your reputation. It may cost you misunderstanding. You focus. With time when your light shines, everyone will see it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. There's any sister here that you are around any guy who is sleeping around and doing every, whether he's a pastor, pope, bishop, leave him this night. Send him a text message. And tell him, Pastor, I respect the grace of God upon your life. But I'm really sorry. I'm ready to be serious with God. Or brother or whatever. Make up your mind to live by the word of God. Make up your mind. This is in preparation for the mighty things God is going to be doing on Friday. You must be ready to do it, to be a doer. Many of us, God stopped giving us instructions a long time ago because if he tells you, you don't even do it. Thank you, Jesus. Lift your hands. Father, as a family, we pray. We want to be authentic Christians. We want to be genuine. And Lord, we are asking you to help us. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that genuine, honest committer for God his ways for obedience practicing principles that cut across every sphere of our lives our spiritual lives our finances the anointing excellence whatever principle help us remove a heart of stone oh God and give us a heart of flesh tonight let the spirits of men stop struggling with you 
in the name of Jesus Christ. And whoever is under the sound of my voice, who has become a prey to Satan, as a result of negligence, I set you free tonight. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I silence the voice of the accuser over your life. I declare and I say, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. The blood speaks mercy which is higher than judgment. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that God would destroy any appetite for disobedience to his word. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I separate you from godless associations. I pray for grace that as you go back home, what needs to be destroyed will be destroyed. What needs to be deleted will be deleted. In the name of Jesus Christ. Exodus chapter 10 verse 7. 10 verse 7 we are reading down to 10. Please hurry up media help us. And Pharaoh's servant said unto him, How long shall this man be a snare unto you? Let the men go that they may do what? This is the reason why they have to go. There is a motif for liberty. There is a motif for prosperity. There is a motif for advancement. He said, let my people go that they may go and keep it their place and serve the Lord their God. Then he says, knowest thou not that Egypt is destroyed? Read on. Next verse. 8. And Moses said unto, and Moses and Aaron were brought again to Pharaoh. And he said unto them, go, serve the Lord your God. But then he began to negotiate. He said, but who are they that shall go? Finally, I have been persuaded. But let's begin to talk. Who are those who will go? Verse 10. Okay, verse 9. Leave it there. And Moses said, we will go with our young, come on, our future. And we will go with our old. There must be restoration. Certain things that should have happened. It says, and with our sons and with our daughters and with our flocks and with our herd. He said, for we must hold a feast. We are not going like fugitives. We need to go triumphantly. Are we together now? Verse 10. And he said unto them, let the Lord be so with you as I will let you go and your little ones look to it he says for evil is before you when you read on he began to negotiate he said let's allow the men go but leave the women Moses said no way everything is going listen when God saves he saves to the uttermost he will not bring health and leave finances are we together now many believers have an attitude of negotiating with darkness let me tell you something when you mount pressure on satan he will release something small and let you go and then we get carried away out of 10 people in your family only one person now has a breakthrough and you are still satisfied moses said no we are going with our old we are going with our young you release my job but my health is still there they must all go it's the same command that affects everything are we together i came here angry tonight in my spirit it's not as if some of us have not received breakthrough but the devil has deceived us with miracles so that you can no longer turn back and see that there are other things that have refused to move so he gave you a job and little did you know that the child has not come and time is running if god gave you a job can't he give you a child tonight is a night of dogged insistence everything if you release one every other thing must follow you can't release my brother's salvation and keep my father's own this night everything must go are you hearing what i'm saying please pay attention he says let my people go i don't just need them to serve me but a feast before me a feast is a sign of victory in ancient times when they won war they would gather the women and the young children and the victorious men would come with the head of the king or drag him together and they would sing blowing the shofar it's called triumph it was an and then all the spoils that they had gotten from the land they would bring it and 
and as they began to dance the bible says in the multitude in the midst of multitude is the king's honor so they will gather slaves that came from that nation and they will come and like bow down to the king to show that we are yours now he said let my people go you can never truly serve the lord until you are released to go i want the people to serve me but as it is there are situations in their lives that cannot allow them to serve me are we together yeah so they say you have a medical condition you can't pray for 15 minutes you lift your voice something hooks you that's a pharaoh holding you you can't pray there's nothing you can do i've said it again you see people go to pray and the moment they they stand to pray the next thing they stop praying and they are moving around because of worry because of worry they cannot pray financial worries health worries are we together now we prayed for a woman in lagos during a program who had been pregnant for two years how many years two years every sign of pregnancy but the machine shows that she's perfectly fine her stomach is flat according to the machine is that a medical condition no sir life is spiritual remember spiritual intelligence life is what this pharaoh we are talking about is not just a man pharaoh is a spirit he uses men just like jezebel pharaoh is not a man the man pharaoh died the spirit pharaoh is still alive and there are many people under the bondage of pharaoh but not tonight not tonight the mighty god of israel will arise with an outstretched arm i i told you what the lord told me here while i was praying he said trust me and watch your situation turn around it doesn't take time it only takes faith when you trust god he will prove himself in a way that will surprise you tell my people please sit down as always you have a role to play everyone listen to me the role you have to play is your commitment to serving god listen 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 deliverance is not for you to leave egypt and live your life your own way at your own terms no sir he said let my people go that they may go and serve me listen write this down service is the greatest way to provoke judgment over darkness service thank god for prayer thank god for fasting next week we are going to start another powerful i will be sharing with you a very deep kingdom mystery next week service is the greatest way to provoke judgment the moment there was a willingness in the heart of the nation of israel to serve god listen god will not step in and break poverty in your life just because you are an adult it's too small a reason to see the hand of god this is where many christians authorize satan to destroy their lives are we together now come you are in bondage and you want liberty this is your place of destiny this is where you are egypt and the lord is saying there is a condition there is a state of heart you don't have the power to deliver yourself but you have the will to say lord i am committed to serving you but poverty is stopping me from buying books i want to buy the books are we together i can't pray because the rent is expired the landlord is not a spirit he's alive he's a real person he's coming tomorrow and god says you mean you want me to clear the way for you to serve me god says that's the kind of prayer that i like Israel. now the challenge with many believers hear me and this is where we strengthen satan listen carefully tonight our unwillingness to live for god and to serve him are we together versus his outstretched hand and his power to deliver us god wants to deliver us but the justification the basis 
upon which his hand will come upon us many of us disqualify ourselves because our motive for deliverance is not genuine there is only one motive one let my people go that they may do what go and serve me serve me they may go and serve me this has nothing to do with being a man of god please listen this has nothing to do with being a pastor this has nothing to do with being a pastor's wife serving god is the lifetime assignment of everyone what you call your job or any avenue is just a doorway let me tell you brothers and sisters it says i shall not die but why will i live but live and declare live and proclaim the justification for being alive and being victorious is a heart and a life that is committed to promoting the kingdom you are representing him and advancing the frontiers of his kingdom there is no devil strong enough to take your life it says many are the afflictions of the righteous the bible says but the lord delivered him from them how many affliction is not unusual are we together jesus himself said let us go to the other side and he met a storm meeting a storm is not a sign that you that um you are not a christian jesus met a storm on the all-knowing god said let's go to the other side between prophecy and manifestation he met a storm so meeting a storm in your life is not the issue the storm overcoming you and making rubbish and nonsense out of your life is where your victory becomes questionable there are many of us here right now with all kinds of storms standing before you dead sentences given by doctors some of you are holding it and wondering can god change it there are many of us in situations that only god in heaven you can't even share it with human beings because they do not have the faith to believe a man can be going through this and still be alive but there is a god in heaven brothers and sisters you are gathered tonight before that god in heaven there are men who are held in bondage god has anointed and called them but the doors of ministry will never open you know why because many of them don't want to serve god doing ministry is not serving god no sir make no mistakes about it you're a man of god here pay close attention let me show you why you keep getting disappointment in ministry you can be anointed praying in tongues raising the dead all that is stories if your heart is not committed to serving the purposes of the kingdom forget about all of these things most people want power when you see a man of god walking in the anointing when you see crowds when you see all kinds of results happening in the life of a man and a ministry many people admire they want it you see god has no problem giving it but your motive your motive your motive oh god give me twins god says even if you want 10 i can give you what is your motive let me tell you something this issue of committal to serve god this committal to follow and pursue hard after god is a big secret a big secret the justification behind the stagnancy of many people and the motivation behind them leaving that place to another realm let my people go oh lord change my financial status god says i can it is within my power but what for and he said god i'm just tired of poverty god says that's not enough reason that's if i give you too much money with no assignment it will kill you it will destroy you the bible says the prosperity of fools will destroy them lord give me a crowd of thousands of people make me a man of influence lord let people love me let me just be a celebrity and god says it's all within my power justify your reason and he says lord i came from a background of inferiority god says so what that's not a reason for me to trust you with influence and grace but when a man's heart becomes resolute lord grant me finances so that one day i will override the building of your house god says you want to do this for me and then you quote his scripture back for the sake of thy house i desire thy prosperity and god says that's it 
you've satisfied the condition to see my hand lord heal my body i want to serve in your house but the department i want to join requires energy and lord i have found out that i have a medical condition that cannot allow me carry chairs and god says who gave you that condition the moment anything stands between you and serving god it has become god's enemy is god's own fight let me tell you how to join god and satan you service let your problem follow you to the altar of service and stand back and god says whatever stands in the way of any man serving me has become my enemy including a man are we together now when he when 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 the captain of the host of israel appeared before joshua he said are you for us or against you? he said all that is nonsense whoever is on god's side is the person i'm for if you are against god i strike you if you are for god we are a team god is not a christian god is on the side of whoever has the heart to glorify the father and to see his kingdom come and his purposes established that you're a christian is no guarantee that you will get the partnership of god your heart is god preaching to someone tonight lord i want you to launch me far i want you to change my life you have said it's the year of triumph and god says it's not a lie brother there is more anointing and unction than you have ever dreamt to walk in leave all these kindergarten visions here and there there are superior dimensions but your motive you, you pray for 40 days but your motive corrupts it from day one and god says come to a point where your heart is committed to serving me and i will not release do you know my 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 project with god is to come to a point where god is not afraid of doing anything with me or committing anything to me i want to get to that level of trust with god where whether the virtues are with him or with me it makes no difference because it's all his own come on now whether that anointing is in the throne room or walking through my life it makes no difference because it is for his glory tonight hear me it is god's desire to heal you it doesn't take rocket science but now when you become free and energetic what do you do with that strength that's the question god is asking lord i used to sing well but then i had an infection that destroyed my voice and god says but i've never seen you commit yourself to singing in my house and lifting up my name and now you want me to clear that throat condition so that you go back and the devil will use your voice for nonsense and god says no way you can cry you can roll on the floor if your motive is not intact forget about the experience of the power of god are we together now say lord say it everybody lord i declare that as you bless me as you heal me as you deliver me i vow to serve you with my life I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. Cross before me, the world behind me, no turning back, no turning back. The cross before me, the world behind me, no turning back, no turning back. Forsake me, still I will follow. No turning back, hey, no turning back. Don't man forsake me, still I will follow. No turning back, no turning back. 
Come on, sing it before him. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Hey, I have decided. It's a costly assumption to assume tonight that everybody wants to follow Jesus. He said, I've, I've discovered that there are people who genuinely are not interested in following God. I'm not talking of self perfection, I'm talking of a sincere committal to following Jesus genuinely with your life. No way. There are many parasites of Jesus financial parasites of jesus there are parasites of kingdom principles they want to use kingdom principles and mysteries as a ladder to become famous sir it doesn't work that way oh please hear me tonight there are people every time you hear a man of god talk about passion for jesus you think they are talking about ordination to ministry no sir is an addiction to see his kingdom come for god's sake what else will i be doing with my life if not lifting up his name jesus i lift up your name jesus i lift up your name that's what i do for a living jesus i lift up your name yeah jesus i lift up your name Time to lift your voice and say, Jesus, I lift up your name. I lift up your name. If God cannot find his purposes fulfilled through your life, I tell you, forget about the outstretched hand of God. You hear me say this, don't let any man fool you. God is not a herbalist. My brother is your heart God is looking for. Not tight, not offering. Your heart, not music, not just energy. My son, give me your heart. Give me your heart. Give me your heart. I want your heart. When we talk about Jesus Christ, many people frown their face as if you are speaking against civilization. The days that will come, please hear me, people of God. The days that will come will require outspoken radical passion for Jesus. All this organized civilized nonsense that makes God look secondary will be the recipe for the dominion of darkness over the life of people. Oh, I'm now 25 years. Don't, don't make me look like a child. I'm now 30 years. I hope you know I'm now the director of A and B and C nonsense. And that's the reason why you're... Uh, David danced before God. And his wife said, Abba King. And keep your dignity. And David looked at her and said, hold on. You don't even know the mystery of how you became my wife. If you know it, you will join me dancing. I was a little boy with no hope, no destiny. Didn't read any book. I was a smelly shepherd in the wilderness. I danced my way beyond any king to get to the throne and now because I am here you carry your dignity the Bible says God had him all and that woman died barren it was not the devil that made her barren let my people go not that they may go around causing trouble and wasting time and just counting age and growing older let my people go that they may go and serve me this issue of living for jesus serving jesus no let bless him accepting him into your heart there are many people when you talk about genuine surrender not coming out to recite an altar call i make up my mind i am for jesus forever they laugh at you they laugh at you because it doesn't make sense to them they don't see the need why should i give my life to jesus 
I want to be the God of my own self. So you manage your life by yourself. I want to be the God of my own self. So you answer your prayer by yourself. I want to be the God of my own self. So you mismanage your life by yourself. It says submit down to the mighty hand of God. Then resist the devil and he will flee. You know, I sincerely see a lot of people, great men and women of God, who want to walk in the anointing. And I see the way they play games with submitting to the authority of Christ. You will never be trusted with certain dimensions of the anointing until God vets your passion. You can't fake it. There is a level of kingdom influence and power. No, it go to a herbalist, you will still not get that dimension. It takes your heart dead to Christ, not just living. This one you have died to the purposes of the kingdom. Otherwise, you cannot carry certain levels of grace. No, the kingdom has rules. You, you can fake it with men, but not with God. There is a dimension, brothers and sisters, where God vets your heart and sees that Pastor Femi will live and die for me. I'm not, it's not one leg in today, and God is not sure what you will become in 2019. No. <laughs> Basanko 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 listen to me everyone inside outside the overflows along the road listen I want to make a serious altar call now everybody sit down and listen carefully let me tell you something brothers and sisters coming to surrender your heart to Jesus is not an initiation into a religion called Christianity no are we together now where you are switching founders <laughs> from an idol worshiper you were worshiping stone are we together and now you say guys stone is not a better alternative so i come to another founder there are not 10 gods there is one god hear ye O israel the lord our god is one god i don't care who preaches what there is only one god the king eternal we can argue it but one day very soon the difference will be made clear there are people seated here listening to me i don't condemn you but brothers and sisters it's time to be serious with god shortly you're going to experience radical deliverances and healings and miracles but that is only useful when your heart is with god i don't care whether you have been a pastor for 10 years there are two altar calls i'm going to make in one right now please hear me carefully those following us online from any nation you're following just listen carefully you may not be able to run out but i want you to pay attention and participate number one there are people for you you have never made a genuine decision you have heard that people repent you have heard that people come to jesus you have even given them transport money but genuinely from your heart my father is a pastor that's not what i'm saying I grew up in a church you are joking you have to come genuinely we gave our lives to Christ it's not an inheritance of a family you come personally the other day they blessed all of us together you are not born again it has to be genuine personal and conscious when I was a baby they baptized me come and join them as soon as I made that altar call you come and join them are we together number two there are those who the war of passion and seriousness with god there is this fear of getting serious with god for some reason you think if i get serious with god my, i won't make it in life the moment i'm serious with god i won't get a nice husband uh, men these days don't like serious ladies who, who lie to you which men which one are you talking about the drunk are there the smoke are there 
or a genuine Holy Ghost born again visionary brother if I'm serious with God when it's time to chop in the office my conscience will not allow me chop that's a joke is it that God cannot bless you must you bribe to rise that's how everybody is doing it you are lying that's not how every that's how you know or you have been taught that everybody is doing it Elijah said I'm the only one God said keep quiet there are 7,000 others who have not bowed to Baal please hear me there are people here God wants to visit your family but there is no one in your family who is born again and you will be the first tonight because God needs an access point to your family the system of the kingdom is such that God must find a portal within a territory to manifest his purposes within that territory if and when God does not find a man his power is still limited there must be an individual through sacrifice and alignment who will be able to host the purposes of the kingdom within a sphere to allow the possibilities of God find expression so if God wants to come to your family he moves everywhere and everybody says I'm, I'm, I'm too busy he comes to your mother she says I'm too busy looking for money he comes to your father I'm too confused to give my life to you comes to your brother no I'm, I'm too I'm too I want to marry now God please go somewhere he comes to your sister I'm looking for men there's no time to look for God and God says I want to step into this family no one has given me space if God can find one person he, he needs to take it step by step when he finds you the prophetic implication of your relationship starts judging the powers of darkness one by one and before you know it someone starts having a strange dream in your family he lies down and he has a dream of rapture he won't share it but that dream would torture him till he thinks about it he would get up alone and you find out for the first time he didn't steal money again he saw angels he saw the white throne he doesn't need to know what it is his spirit has been designed to recognize spiritual things but tonight you must come genuinely to Jesus don't come out here if you are playing games it has let me tell you the implication of coming out here you must be ready to scatter and destroy wrong dangerous and ungodly relationships by the grace and the Spirit of God you just need the will the grace is what you receive here number two you must be ready and willing to be committed to the house of God to grow this dilly darling with God is the recipe for failure I'm too young to reject God the fierceness of life will destroy me if at my level in life I claim I'm too big for God before we continue tonight I'm going to count one to ten listen everyone heard me loud and clear overflow outside overflow along the road as I'm speaking to you the Holy Ghost is probing you those of you standing on the fence there I see you and the Lord is speaking to you online probably you are listening now or following from another nation of the world and you are saying but I'm far distance is no barrier it doesn't matter you are still on earth everyone on earth will be judged whether you are in London whether you are wherever I'm going to make this altar call now I want you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come to Jesus I know you will be healed young and old I don't care how long you have been you are saying Lord I'm tired of living my life the way I want I want to hand it genuinely inside outside start running one to ten one genuinely run like there's fire on the mountain two Three. So keep coming. Don't say there's no space. Even if you have to line up outside, no problem. This is your salvation with God. 
greater than any miracle tonight just find somewhere to stand if the place is full keep lining up here right outside five someone is still thinking about it and saying apostle i'm a nice person have never done anything wrong it's just that i've not declared jesus join them by the self-righteousness of no man can he be saved you didn't do anything wrong but that very nature of darkness is resident upon you all of you who are standing here please don't look at anyone lift your voice in one minute and begin to talk to jesus everyone who is standing stretch right outside and those online talk to jesus right now and say jesus i come to you i come to you pray talk to him and everyone seated i expect you to be praying for someone's salvation you know everybody around you cannot be saved there is somebody somewhere still hardened towards the things of god lift your voice and cry to jesus lord i'm saved but my father is not saved he's on his way to hellfire and i know it my mother is not saved i know today that if the trumpet sounds they are going to hell for sure i know my sister is not saved my husband is not saved my wife is not saved my colleague in office is not saved lord i know that pastor is not saved he has a church but he's not saved pray cry your heart to jesus he is here much miracle service you are meeting with the savior he wants to reveal himself first as savior before deliverer before healer hallelujah hallelujah all of you standing stretched to the outside please look at me i see you some of you are crying sincerely from your heart listen there is no man who has the power and authority to condemn you young and old i don't care what you have done i don't care how your life is we are all products of his mercy and grace are you hearing what i'm saying don't let any man point an accusing finger but then you cannot remain where you are there are people standing here and say man of god if you will lead me to pray i will i will love it i've been praying for an opportunity like this but there are powers always keeping me wherever you are inside outside don't mind who is looking at you lift your right hand to heaven and you are going to say this prayer after me please it is not a poem it is a genuine genuine prayer meaning from the depth of your heart it says i am not ashamed of the gospel why for it is the power of god unto salvation the lord wants to give you a new beginning i know you came to be healed but he wants to take over your destiny with your hands lifted to jesus who is here not in heaven right here in this place say after me passionately and sincerely say lord jesus i love you with all my heart this night I have heard your word and I make up my mind that from tonight and for the rest of my days I will live for you I will serve you without shame without fear without going back this night I hand over my life to you say it again I hand over my life to you be my Lord be my Savior I declare that the power of sin of Satan of the flesh is broken every association that is not of God I'm separated from them this night. I declare that the joy of salvation and the peace and a new beginning is mine from today. I am a child of God. 
and I will live for him forever. Hallelujah. Keep your hands lifted. Jesus, look at the ones you died for. When you hung upon that cross, you saw them. And today we are glad to present them to you. This is why you put this meeting together. We lift them up as trophies. Worthy trophies for your blood. Worthy trophies for your death. And Lord, I decree and declare that these ones you have brought tonight, none will be lost. I speak over your life. The joy of salvation that very few people know about. May it be your inheritance today. I declare that the peace that surpasses all understanding let it be yours today I declare that every guilt the devil uses against you every accusation will roll it away right now in the name of Jesus I declare your sins forgiven by the message of God I declare that you have a new beginning with God you are empowered by the Spirit to live a victorious life in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen let's appreciate them keep standing everyone i'll give you some instructions now now there are so many of you probably hundreds of you this is what i want you to do um protocol please help coordinate let's do it this way those of you who are in the second overflow the overflow right from the door that leads to the road as you go out please let's have some of the ushers you stand so they can attend to you there what will happen is they are going to have your details i know you are all so many but we want your details we have a system to follow you up and to make sure you are grounded in god that's number one that's the first instruction so those outside those here at the overflow and those inside you may not need to go out just wait where you are and someone will come to attend to you please i hope the relevant departments are listening so that we can respond to them very quickly we have five ten minutes for this because i'll start praying for the sick now praise the lord now the second instruction i want to give all of you is this the bible says they that be planted in the house of god it says they shall flourish it is important not only for you to just get born again but to be planted in the house of god instruction number three is we have a system of spiritual growth here in koinonia it's a very large house so what we do is that anyone who gets born again automatically we transfer them to our prayer department for one month whether or not you will continue as a member in the prayer department the prayer department meets tuesdays 4 p.m just at the church uh, when you walk from this road right down rema chapel more information will be communicated to you and so we usually have all um, new converts to be part of the prayer department there you get to be filled with the holy spirit and you have seasons of prayer to build your spirit and it helps you to cultivate a culture of the word and also to have a kingdom community that supports your spiritual growth all these things are very important for your growth i don't want you to waste this experience praise the lord i bless you in the name of jesus and shortly the lord is going to be turning your life around in greater dimensions so let's do this very quickly appreciate them as they go just guide them whether or not you belong to any department you're a member of koinonia you see any of them moving just guide them as they go out quickly let's honor them koinonia as they do so is that the best you can do hallelujah Please coordinate them, coordinate them. Let's just give them some room so that they can go out and then we will shake off every power of darkness roaming around anybody's life. I never see anyone like you. I never see anyone like you. Hey, I never see anyone like you. Where's yes, Sam? Help me. Like I never see anyone like you. I never see anyone like you. I never see anyone like you. I never see anyone like you.
everyone stand up let's pray some prayers before let's pray some prayers while they are working on the people everyone say after me in the name of Jesus please say be serious in the name of Jesus father tonight visit me this is my destiny give me strange results lift your voice and begin to pray visit me in the name of Jesus visit me step into my destiny step into my destiny step into my destiny hallelujah in the name of Jesus shout it again in the name of Jesus every long-standing issue in my life and my destiny I declare that you must give way tonight lift your voice and begin to pray long-standing challenges are you praying tonight? Long standing issue. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please, if you can, pair yourselves into two and pray this prayer. If you are holding a child or you are doing something, that's all right. Otherwise, find somebody, a serious neighbor, hold the hand. I want you to agree. Say, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that the door for the next level of my life and that of my neighbor must be open now. Lift your voice and pray. Agree. If any truth shall agree, as touching, believe in what you are saying. You are opening doors. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are still holding your hands. Say in the name of Jesus. Father, tonight, take away shame. Take away mockery from my life, my family, and my neighbor. Lift your voice and pray seriously. Roll away the reproach. Roll away the reproach of mockery. Roll away the reproach of shame. Roll away the reproach. Pray. Roll away the reproach. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus. Father, expose every force, every yoke, every spirit.
behind the tragedies in my life in my destiny and my family expose them tonight lift your voice and pray for the light shines in darkness pray for the light shines in darkness let your light shine oh God Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Lord, let your anointing, let your unction locate me tonight and turn my life around. Lift your voice and pray that the power of God must locate me. Change my destiny. Let your power pray. One encounter with the anointing of the Holy Ghost can wipe your tears, my brother, my sister. Pray. Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, light me, Lord, like menorah. Light me, Lord. Listen, listen to me. I will just give you an instruction. Just help those under the anointing, but listen to me carefully, please, everyone. Do you know the reason why we minister deliverance? Listen, listen carefully. You have to understand this. The reason why we minister deliverance, you don't spend your whole life going through deliverance. However, there are lives come, my dear, when a spirit listen carefully when a spirit latches onto your life and destiny brothers and sisters let me tell you i don't care what you do physically remember spiritual intelligence you can be doing the right physical things but the presence of a spirit representing an embargo representing a covenant an authorization for your doom will keep you down there and you find out that your life will never open up when people gather like this hear me they come with prayer requests they come with problems but you see behind those problems are spirits are we together now the spirits that are responsible for lack of favor the spirits that are responsible for a hard life the spirits that are responsible for infirmity all kinds of cases you know one of our dear people here in the ministry 
I prayed over the father's picture. I've seen those kinds of cases on television and all of that, but you could look at the leg and see the bone. The bone, the flesh had eaten to a point that you could see the bone. What happened to the man? He went to bed in the night. Brothers and sisters, I think somebody did something for him in a dream and he woke up physically and his legs started eating up. The Bible says the whole world lieth in wickedness. You want to move forward but there is an embargo. The solution is not counseling. You need an encounter with power. Everybody say power. Listen, the power of the Holy Spirit is not a negotiator. It's an enforcer. When the power of God comes, it does not ask you whether you want to be free. Your assignment is to be open till it reaches you. When it comes, it scatters anything that does not look like God. Lift your hands, everyone. Just lift your hands and be silent. I will pray for you now. The Spirit of God is upon me. Lift your hands, everyone. There are people here right now. I want you to bring there the first sets of people who will come out. Usher's grace for you and protocol. I know you have a lot of work today because there's such a crowd right to the road. But I want to pray. Everyone, please lift your hands. The Lord is speaking to me. There are people right now in your silence. Hold on. Maybe just this. The power of God will begin to come upon you. What is happening right now before we pray for the sick is massive deliverance. That deliverance is equal to breakthrough, equal to new levels. But lift your hands. There are people here who are under strong yokes of delay. And the Lord gives me an instruction. We will just lift our hands and be silent. That's all the instruction. And inside and outside, the Spirit of God will begin to locate them. Are we together? When that happens, then we'll take it off from there. That's the first thing God wants to do tonight. Just lift your hands, everyone. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is asking me to stretch my hands. And there are people and families and those following on, online. Except you are not under the influence of the spirit of delay. That spirit must leave you. Are we together? So keep your hands lifted. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, wherever they are right now, I stretch my hands. According to the instructions you have given me, inside and outside. Right now, I see the anointing of the spirit already falling over the spirit of delay. Keep your hands lifted. Bring them out. Outside, there. Just the angels of the Lord are walking. I'm seeing like smoke just moving across lines, line by line, inside and outside. When it comes to you, when you are under that influence, that's the end of it. Right now, I command it. The word of the Lord is upon this prophecy. In the name of Jesus, no instruments, don't play anything. Outside, there is massive deliverance happening. Separation from delays separation from delays bring them out thank you jesus delays you want to move forward but the spirit ties you down it's over right now no you can't dodge it you are under an atmosphere there is an influence the influence of the spirit line by line the holy ghost is moving row by row there is no faking it line by line lord every row every line every individual let no one in this category escape it for the sake of your mercy and your grace no matter where you are inside and outside online don't worry the spirit of god is moving one by one it must catch up with you the word of the lord is upon it Bring them out, young, old, destinies that have been delayed. Tonight there is serious grace for deliverance. Those of you lifting up your hands, be sensitive. Be sensitive. We're in a prophetic atmosphere right now. Bring them. I see people outside. Kai. My God. 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 
many people many people many people many people there's someone you are following from kenya you are watching from a laptop the anointing your hands are shaking the spirit of the lord is upon you judging every darkness tonight you will be located by god you prayed it you must be free please help the ushers if there are too if there are too few protocol join them different departments help them the lord really wants to set people free it's a year of triumph don't think these people are just coming out for show they represent breakthroughs these are the people who god wants to give testimonies darkness raging over the lives of people they came from different places how will god leave them that way right now all of you in front here i decree and declare to those spirits at the count of three let them go you know my voice one two three go 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 out of their lives now out now i command you by the influence of the spirit i decree and declare let their destinies go delay broken go now hallelujah now lift your hands my god you'll be surprised at what will happen now everyone self tell me in the name of jesus say it again in the name of jesus say it again in the name of jesus the grace for open doors right now break every chain in my life keep your hands lifted watch it happen now that's the instruction god gave me that grace breaking chains now i'm speaking across the congregation i have been seeing this for weeks but locks opening in the realm of the spirit that's what the lord is showing me but locks opening 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 right now I open them. I'm under the shadow of yours. Your influence is all over me. I'm under the shadow of yours. Your influence is all over me. I'm under the shadow. Your influence is all over me. Oh, lift your hands. Lift your hands. Fire is coming on 32 people, and this fire that is coming upon them is to break family altars. I hear family altars right now. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, one, two, three. I set those altars now on fire. Right now, 32 people. I see in the realm of the spirit. I command it right now. I command it. Everyone on this ground under the influence of any altar. Now be free now. Help them, please. Help that lady. Be free now. So right now be free now be free now your influence is all over me i'm under 
the shadow of your own everyone lift your hands say this after me in the name of Jesus please say it seriously say in the name of Jesus any spirit that has had access to my life and is causing destruction hear the word of the Lord as I shout the name Jesus I command you to live my life at the count of three shout Jesus there will be an exiting of many strange spirits one two three shouting I command spirits you go now you go now you go now you go now inside and outside any spirit resident within any man's life any woman's life causing pain Hallelujah. Oh, as I pray for grace for you in Jesus' name. Because what I see now is not a nice thing. The Lord is asking me that we shout Jesus. There are people who are going to vomit physical things. That's why I said it's a messy scene. I, I apologize. We're very neat and organized people inside and outside. But in the name of Jesus right now, any stranger in your body at the count of three must go out now. One, two, three. I command every stranger. Go now. Every poison. Every devil causing sicknesses, every fibroid, every devil, every enchantment. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me a vision of a lady. If you're here, I want you to come out. I'm seeing your family doing something like a sacrifice, and they are giving somebody, everybody, a substance like a drink, something to take. They gave everybody, including you, and you took it. Where is that person? Please, if you're here, I want you to come out quickly. It's a, it's a highly diabolic thing they gave everybody. Where are you? Come. Your deliverance comes now. I'm under the shadow of your wings. Help me. Your influence is all over me. Let's have another mic, please. Hold on. Stand up, my dear. Is this the lady? Two of them? Stand up. Where are you from? Look at me. Huh? Kogi State. State. What happened to you? Hold on. I converted. Hold on. I'm looking at you, Kai. This thing. You entered a covenant. Huh? Yes. With who? I don't know my mother. I don't know. They she brought somebody, and you people entered a covenant and they gave you something. Hold my hands. Shout Jesus. Jesus. I command that covenant, that demonic thing, time your life. And this miracle service, it lives now. In the name of Jesus. You too. Where are you from? I'm from Kogi State. You are from Kogi State. The same thing. Hold my hands. Look at me. I command that devil to leave you now whatever yoke please don't come out if I don't call your case are you part of them mr. man young man you're part of them in the name of Jesus I set you free bring the, your, you to come make sure that so that we don't get the place rowdy be delivered now help her out be free now out I'm interested in this lady please stand up my dear if you can this lady's whole family is in bondage whole family the entire family nothing is working in your family 
the Lord wants to deliver you right now hold my hands I command that spirit your time is up leave this family now in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ I break the yoke over your life now out now there is a lady you have been coughing blood where are you you are coughing literally and blood is coming out there is a lady like that please where are you let's hurry up we have a lot to do this night the lord is asking me to minister to a lady that coughs and then blood you cough blood who is that inside outside except you are under the anointing please come out quickly i want to pray for that person now where are you how long hold on just just keep up where's the mic how long you you are an usher you how long three weeks eh? three weeks. for three weeks you've been caught lay your hand on your chest you too lay your hands on your chest you too huh substance your what hold on please guys hold on yours is what the substance you spoke about what substance lift your hands lift your hands lift both of them i'm seeing an angel pouring something on your hand your hand will start shaking and then the lord is bringing you strange deliverance it will start from your hands down to your body i place the word of god upon your life right now in the name of jesus christ both of you look at me both of you cough out blood in the name of jesus i lay my hands upon you it ends now in the name of jesus out right now there are spirits responsible for this kite ta, 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 ta. do you know what i just saw the lord opened my eyes and i saw like a cage and in the cage i saw snakes that's all i'm seeing that's all i'm seeing lift your hands everybody the lord is just asking me to wave my hands over the congregation there are people who represent that oppression it will leave now the Lord is asking me to wave my hands. Lord, as you have said, I see snakes in cages. Whose destiny is that? Right now, whose destiny is that? I wave my hands. In the name of Jesus, please release them for your glory. Release them now. Help them, please, Jesus Christ. Inside, outside. Be out of that cage now. I see snakes, serpents. Some of you see them in your dreams. They must go now. They are leaving you now. Now. They are leaving you now. I command liberty. 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 Hallelujah. I'm hearing a name, Jane. Jane, like J A N E. Jane. 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 I'm also hearing another name, Victory. Is it Victory? Like Victory. Victory. Please don't come out if that's not your name. What's your name? Jane. Your name is Victory. Where are you from? Delta State. Delta State. I have to pray for you. Your family is being seriously oppressed. Why are you people here? You are all Jane. Jane, your name is Victory. I want to pray for you. Kaza Chat. Kaza Chat. Is it Kaza Chat? Who is that? Kaza Chat. I'm hearing that name. That's that's like a Kaduna name. Kaza Chat. Please, who is that? The breakthrough of your family has come. Kaza Chat. Is it? I don't know why God is going to Kaduna now. Nom. Is it Nom Shu or Nom Shu or something like that? I don't know if there's a name like that. Nom Nom Shu or something like that. Nom something. Listen, that is your name. You are. Why are they here? I call their names. I'm going to lay hands on you. 
except for you i don't even know why the rest of you are but please i want you to believe the moment i lay my hands on you something will happen the lord is saying i should start with you lord open her door now in the name of jesus christ hold my hands reproach leaves your life now in the name of jesus christ reproach leaves your life now by the power of the holy ghost reproach leaves your life now reproach leaves your life now hold my hands call your parents and tell them the lord is giving them breakthrough your family your entire family delta state breakthrough right now in the name of jesus christ hold on. The serious witchcraft over your life hold my hands lord the lord is asking me to walk with you this is how your destiny is opening up that's what the lord is asking me to do walk with you to walk with you something is happening it's a prophetic act you will not help her to walk with you opens in the name of jesus your destiny opens up now in the name of jesus christ lift your hands this girl lift your hands where you are i'm seeing wind around you and the lord is that wind is going anti-clockwise anti-clockwise and the lord said is restoration i stretch my hands upon you right now i release that grace for restoration restoration there are seven other people who will tap from this anointing this same anointing right now seven seven right now the anointing for restoration is coming upon them. Receive it right now, wherever you are. Zabata kata la kata frate kese brende gata. Lekate pras kata barato shubre diara. Hallelujah. I'm seeing one mama outside. It's like you came here with your daughter or something. I'm seeing a woman sit down with her daughter outside. Now that's all I'm giving about you. Please, if you can find that woman and if you understand what I've said, I want you to run and come. I want to pray for the sick now, but God is delivering people. God is delivering people. Seth. Seth. Who is Seth? S-E-T-H. S-E-T-H. Your name is Seth. Seth said the lord is stepping into his life right now said is there someone with that name said have you found the mama i'm talking about don't worry let them come let them come doesn't matter with your daughter <laughs> Mama, Kai, there is the spirit of death on your family. I'm going to pray for you. Don't be afraid. I'm not a prophet of doom. You came from where, Mama? I came from Edo State. From Edo State? Yes, but I live in Wusasa. You live in Wusasa? Yes. But you came from Edo State. Yes. I must pray for you. There, why is he here? Who is this gentleman? Seth, you too. You are an usher. Okay. Kai, this is not the set I'm seeing. No, I will pray for you. But I'm seeing someone else. Eh? Please, don't be embarrassed. I want to pray for somebody now. Huh? Because I'm seeing an accident killing you. And you took, what's the name of this thing they take? Wee wee. And you were high. You were about to cross the road. And then I'm seeing a truck with the name Angote on it just running and killing you there is somebody here you smoke please don't be there's nothing to be embarrassed about it's not like you are not a serious person but this thing you started taking it from when you were small and it's destroying your life you want to be free but you can't leave it please don't be ashamed come out now quickly please if you are still thinking about it remain on your seat some you have to be free now come out i'm seeing one you wore jeans dress like your shirt I don't know if it's your shirt it's jeans who is that no no there, there's another come out i will pray for you 
this this is not the only guy just keep them here i will pray for him i'm seeing another person outside the second overflow you are standing on the road the spirit of god is speaking to you speaking to you this thing they roll and they smoke and then you even i'm seeing you swallowing a drug i don't know what drug is that please come out come out clap for them as they come out join them quickly and come whether i mention your case or not you are involved in any kind of liquor and addiction indian hem whatever forward march come here your salvation come sir please appreciate them clap for them some of them are not bad people it's a spirit don't be ashamed please usher uh, direct them so that they come here i'm seeing up to five ladies in this group up to five ladies come don't be ashamed don't let anyone laugh at you please this is a miracle service join them we oui, we oui. codeine whatever it is join them whether you know the name of what you are smoking or swallowing or not come and join them please quickly that addiction must be broken now who can stand against the lord no one can no one will keep coming the devil is a liar who can stand against the king no one can, no one will. Oh, 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 please hold on please if the parents of the boy are here don't flog him please this is a very small boy you will not even know that this boy is wise to smoke this thing he saw an elderly person smoking it come out there is a small boy here i know what drag him out come where is the boy come out please gentlemen i'm going to pray for you don't worry you are not bad people i'm seeing a number of ladies up to five ladies they are refusing to come out there's nothing to be embarrassed jesus christ wants to set you free this is a miracle service it's not like you have evil people that's not what we're saying it's a spirit you don't stop by counseling mama there is a spirit of death over your family and i will pray for you i will pray for you in the name of jesus who is this your daughter what's your name my dear Is this mic working? Can you add Lillian, the voice? Lillian. Lillian, what do you want God to do for you? I want God to heal you. What's wrong with you? I've been having problems with my tongue. No. 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 You had a dream. Huh? You saw a snake. You can't even remember it. And from that day, you started having serious problems with your stomach. Huh? What's wrong with you? I've, I've, I've got to test. And, 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 and they told me that it's a, a liver problem. Liver problem. Because I look at you and you would think you are pregnant. But you are not pregnant. Your stomach is swelling up. Mama, is that true? How long has it been? It's, it's out of three years now. Look at, look at, look at evil and wickedness. Are you married? Because you see now assuming a brother has been trusting god to marry this sister do you think the brother will marry her please help me do you think he will marry her you look at her now and you think she's five or six months pregnant but she's not pregnant Kai. there is a lady who has refused to come out the power of god is going to come upon her outside you are supposed to be part of those who will be delivered here i'm seeing the angel of the lord outside that lady you were a sincere lady but i, I don't know if it's um, another lady i don't want to say what i'm seeing not to embarrass you because the, what you were introduced to is not only smoking this there are other things that i see that i may not be able to talk about 
I'm, I'm asking you to come out God wants you to be free for the sake of your family the power of God is going to come upon you outside outside to be free of this thing my dear look at me this is koinonia the Lord is going to set you free you believe in miracles mama you believe in miracles yes, I have to pray for you money runs away from you huh madam I will pray for you mama yeah I'm okay do you hear how sir okay this is your daughter please be comfortable whatever language you can speak there is an interpreter here nobody says you must be able to speak english or whatever any language please if i call you here or you stand here for healing don't be under any pressure to say you must whatever language is comfortable speak it if i don't understand we'll find somebody to interpret please don't put yourself under pressure and say no we are excellent people but we are not fools we can't put anyone under pressure hallelujah mommy i want to pray for you because i'm seeing the lord bringing restoration to your life this is what i am seeing and the lord is asking me to pray for you can i pray for you ma'am i will pray for you I have to pray I'm seeing not you but I'm seeing somebody close to you having an accident traveling to Abuja and having an accident we have to pray I'm not saying it will happen once God reveals it is broken Lord Jesus stretch your hands and let's pray for this mommy you don't have to know her please stretch your hands and pray Lord we avert death we avert death now in the name of Jesus Christ we avert death by the power of the Holy Ghost mama is there a name like Gracilda is it Gracilda or Gracilda Gracilda or Gracilda something like that Gracilda Gracilda something like that if that sounds like your name I'm sorry if I don't mention it well the Lord kept mentioning it in my ears. Gracilda or Grisilda, something like that. If that is your name, please come on. Eh? Jacinta. No. But come. Where are you coming from? Zaria. Zaria. I have to pray for you. There's a gentleman who will destroy you. Be free now from every influence. Hold my hand anybody that is not designed by god i separate you and him forever say amen in jesus name gracilda gracilda i'm hearing gracilda something Hilda. please if it's not you no problem but that's what i'm hearing mama let's pray in the name of jesus christ i pray for you by the power of the holy spirit new beginning for you hold up please in the name of jesus christ my dear lay your hands on your stomach Kai. Lord Jesus, you gathered people here tonight to set them free. I cause the spirit responsible for this. I decree and declare that this stomach will shrink. Every devil will go away in the name of Jesus Christ. If you agree with me, say amen. amen. Look at me and you will never be barren in your life. Say amen. There are two ladies you are inside here there is an embargo of barrenness on your family fire is coming on those two ladies now to break that embargo you don't even know it's in your family it may not be in your life but i'm seeing it right now the angel of the lord is locating two ladies right now and is breaking that embargo thank you father i put the word of god upon this prophetic word that embargo is broken right now right now right now two ladies two ladies there's no reason why you should come here and your life should be the same mama i will pray for you this is your daughter do you know that god is going to use this girl god will use your daughter for his glory hold my hands my dear there's a small girl now but god will use you in the name of jesus christ I anoint you mama I decree and declare let hardship live your life 
in the name of Jesus Christ let hardship live your life in the name of Jesus hold on I'm seeing a wind and the Lord is asking me to follow it this is somebody's deliverance here yeah. this is somebody's deliverance here yeah. this is somebody's deliverance here yeah. this is somebody's deliverance the power of God is coming upon a few people as I'm walking across this place this is somebody's deliverance this is somebody's deliverance Lord set them free right now right now right now I'm seeing something rolling around this room this room this room this road shala sobaria taska bandabria legete geba sharatos kabredia there's no hiding there's no hiding someone in this row someone in this row someone in this row hardship over your family is being broken right now i'm stretching my hands this row right there father locate that person right now right now right now right now right now in the name of jesus christ mama come i want you to rejoice look at me the lord hold on the lord is saying i should tell you that where you have been crying you will begin to laugh you have been crying for 30 years and the lord is saying your breakthrough has come in the name of the lord jesus christ please shake for me come madam Hold my hands. The Lord is there and should tell you it's your season of laughter. In the name of Jesus Christ. Your season of laughter. Your season of laughter. Look at me. Lose her hands now. Lose her hands now. Lose her hands now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let her hands be loose. Your hands are tied. I lose your hands in the realm of the spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. open doors open doors open doors open doors open doors that's what the lord is saying open doors the lord has said you have waited too long it's time for the door of your destiny to be open open doors come there is a spirit in your life that makes bad boys look for you hold my hands leave her now out out when bad boys see you they can't leave you as they are passing they see you that spirit calls them back i don't know who this girl is you're a small girl but the things you know are what you have done out now in the name of jesus you have gone to places you should not go you have you have the phone numbers of people that if we know now i'm not saying you're a bad girl it's a spirit including married men they will be minding their business that spirit will call them to you i command that devil to leave you now leave you now in the name of Jesus Christ I want us to pray for this gentleman before we pray for the sick you see let me tell you something addiction is a very wicked spirit don't look at them especially our dear sisters my brother what happened to you eh? gone short gone short yes, sir. who shot you I'm a soldier I was shot by my colleague you are a meduguri yes sir no he wanted to kill you huh? but he didn't kill you he was directed to kill you Hi. you are a soldier how long has this been it's going to seven months now seven months which where did they shoot your legs and you can't walk with it look at me you believe in miracles lift your crutch lift it lift it come come lift your legs go ahead you're a soldier lift your legs look at this come on koinonia look at this lift your cross up look at this look at this look at this walk as fast as you can don't be afraid turn around turn around come because your wound is not healing there is a wound but there is not healing 
from today I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord who has perfected this leg will also perfect you where are you now you are in Zaria you are still in the force yes you are still in the force huh? yes sir I want to pray for you do you believe God can favor yes sir I have to pray for you God is going to connect you with a senior person and he will lift you huh? look at me brothers and sisters I want to break this addiction from your life now are we together you are very sincere people some of you were initiated into this thing by bad friends some of you were initiated into these things by spirit I'm going to lay my hands on you while the congregation whether your child is here or not whether your brother is here or not as you are praying you are sowing a seed for your own home are you hearing what I'm saying stretch your hand don't look at anybody's face and run your mouth on any it's none of your business Koinonia is a, it's like a hospital stretch your hands I will lay my hands on every one of them please all of you should pray I want to break addiction from your life don't feel condemned Jesus will help you it must be broken right now broken right now broken right now any kind of addiction out out now out out in the name of Jesus out look at this guy out break from his life now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ be set free be set free as soon as I lay my hands on you continue praying be set free addiction break break in the name of Jesus hold my hands darling no addiction for liquor no addiction for drugs something is leaving you I'm seeing something like an arrow coming out of your head out of her life now in the name of Jesus I break that addiction ah. hey Jimmy come the Lord is saying you should pray for this guy he will pray for you this guy needs serious prayer just lay your hands on him in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus out out now I command that devil this is somebody that loves God but this addiction must be broken right now I break it right now I break it right now hold my hands you're a nice lady but we have to break this thing Lord please for your mercy let it be broken in her life in the name of Jesus Christ 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 hallelujah the Lord is asking me to minister to somebody I'm seeing a very interesting case you love God please don't be ashamed there is a particular pain reliever you are addicted to who is that person I want to pray for you now whether you are sick or not come and stand here particular pain reliever you can't help it you can wake up 1 a.m. in the night and swallow it it's a spirit pain reliever I'm not saying you are sick and they gave you in the hospital God is visiting addictions this night quickly come don't sit back and say I'm all right allow God set you free let them come look at this pain I don't know what it is but I hear my spirit pain reliever Whether you are sick, whether you are fine, the urge will hook you and you have to go and get it. If you, you can prefer to take it than to eat food, it must go right now. That's why God put this meeting to help people. 
there's one of you fire is coming on you now after that fire comes on you then i'll pray for the rest that's the instruction god is giving me one of you fire literal fire is coming upon you from heaven as i lay my hands upon you that addiction breaks right now stretch your hands and pray for them don't feel embarrassed broken now broken now broken now in the name of jesus addiction broken now broken now by the power of the holy ghost broken now broken right now by the power of the holy ghost broken now broken now if you have for prayers just move them forward broken now in the name of jesus broken now in the name of jesus broken now in the name of jesus it's broken now in the name of jesus broken in the name of jesus place your hand on your stomach god is not only setting you free he's setting you free from something else let her go now in the name of jesus christ addiction broken now addiction broken now by the power of the holy ghost addiction is broken now in the name of jesus christ broken now hold my hands let her go in the name of jesus christ there is a spirit that wants to destroy your life i command now there's no hiding place for you by the power of the holy spirit you must be set free you are standing in for somebody no problem in the name of jesus christ supernatural freedom hallelujah praise the lord now praise the lord please accept you are nursing a child or doing something let's all rise those outside they are still praying for you no problem all other people please stand up rise up i want us to pray if you are yet to submit your prayer request please do it quickly the bible says unto him that answers prayers shall all flesh come in one minute god can turn your life around everyone stretch your hands here and pray i'm going to lay hands on the request pray passionately from the depth of your heart lord i will not have to write this again pray i've written it the bible says after two days please if there are still people coming bring it quickly it says after two days he will revive us and on the third day he will raise us up online here please pray i'm laying my hands on this request and we're asking the god of heaven visit men and women are you praying now pray in the next one minute i'd like you to pray blast in tongues and say lord this is the last of the prayer request that i'm having to write concerning this issue hallelujah agree with me with a loud amen in the name of jesus christ I decree and I declare over every request gathered from this nation and from the nations of the earth online and here in our local environment Jesus I present to you impossible situations according to men and I ask you turn it around now turn it around now Turn it around now. Let every breakthrough request here be turned into a testimony now. Every case here said by men to be impossible. We, we collide that case with the power of God and we produce testimonies now. 
whoever must die for this prayer to be answered dies now whoever must live for this prayer to be answered lives now whoever must rise for this prayer to be answered rises now whoever must go down for this prayer to be answered goes down now whoever must hear god for this prayer to be answered hears god now father i pray in the name of jesus may your people not have to write this again agree with me may your people not have to write this again lord i pray that before miracle service april let every request here be turned into a testimony may the fire and the anointing of the holy ghost that makes all the difference let it rest on this request the same way fire fell from heaven to consume the sacrifice of elijah may fire fall on this now it has been prayed for you will not write it again it has been prayed for you will not write it again in the name of jesus christ hallelujah please lift up your hands everyone hallelujah listen we're in a very strange season of the manifestation first of the spirit of revelation listen carefully there is a very spectacular outpouring god wants to upgrade the work of his people to access the mysteries of the kingdom not just to know him god wants to equip us with mysteries are we together number two there is a strange outpouring of the supernatural power of god for performance for performance not just that you had god and it never happens not just that you speak and it never happens number three this is personal to us as a family of faith god has declared that is a year of triumph i want you to believe this word oh believe it otherwise you will sit down and you will watch people rise from nothing and then you will keep clapping i'd like you to insist we still have a few minutes for this meeting to be done tonight insist that if you have never stood upon this altar to testify make up your mind and say no god i must stand before your people are you hearing what i'm saying as i speak over your life now among the many things i want to speak right now i want to activate upon your life the grace and the unction for performance many of you may not know what this anointing is listen carefully lift your hands he said who has ever heard that a city was built in one day but as soon as zion travels there is a grace that is coming upon the people of god hear me for performance he said blessed is she that believes for unto her not unto them mm -mm, mm -mm. this is not a corporate thing unto her there shall be there are many things god has said that has not come to pass there is a grace that engenders performance i prophesy to you now in the name of the lord god who called me and sent me may that unction that will make results appear speedily let it come upon you like fire now let it come upon you like fire now receive it now is yours receive it now is yours receive it now is yours performance 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 shake it la bata la prete get the soto ropa shiata grace for performance
everything hanging in the realm of the spirit that is already your portion released by god i decree within the next 30 days it appears physically now i prophesy the spirit of the lord is upon me i speak within the next 30 days it manifests in the name of jesus whatever has slowed down your pace in life so that you are not moving at the pace designed by god i put fire upon your feet and i command speed now i put fire upon your feet i command strength speed strength speed strength speed anything that has not yet worked in your life i don't know why but i'm prophesying i'm speaking to it start working now many of you don't understand what i'm doing to you start working now i don't know what projects you are currently on that has refused to produce i force it to bear fruit now I force it to bear fruit now. Hear me. The Lord spoke to my spirit and told me that the month of April for Koinonia, you may not believe it, but for Koinonia and everyone connected to this grace, the Lord said we will see a strange dimension of wealth and manifestation write this down brothers and sisters is the word of the lord i think i was telling you yesterday that the lord told me this you will see people that know nothing about money rise in a way that they themselves are asking what happened listen except the lord has not sent me i declare you must be part of the testifiers don't say i'm too small receive it don't be foolish in the name of jesus you must be a participant listen i tell you brothers and sisters please write this down you will see a strange rising rising write this down you will say i said it nothing to some i mean mysteriously people will have to ask what is happening it is a grace there is a grace that makes it happen i'm not talking of business i'm talking about the suffering word of god upon the life of a man may it be your portion in the name of jesus i decree upon you the kind of favor that will make even your enemies to say there is God in your life I release that dimension of favor now listen you can't rise in this kingdom without the favor of God you will struggle for nothing please hear me I prophesy it again whoever is lacking favor on his life I decree from this night carry favor inside outside everywhere online carry favor let me prophesy over finances whatever makes money run away from you don't say i'm talking about money you need it for what is coming in ahead whatever makes finances run from you whatever dug a hole in your life that makes you suffer in misery and penury 
I turn it around now. I turn it around now. I pray for every student here. Malasuda kabari katoshela brigati skalabrati. The kind of results you have never seen, I release it to you now. I release it by the Spirit. I release it from the Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. Anyone due for promotion here or anyone's family member rightfully due for promotion and either because of religious sentiments or because of ethno tribal sentiments they have trampled upon you I decree and declare may the angel of God responsible for lifting visit your destiny and ensure that your promotion must manifest I pray for your loved ones. I pray for you. Whoever is called jobless here, yeah, before next miracle service, get something doing now. I prophesy it again. Whoever is called jobless before next miracle service, I don't know how it will happen, but get a good job. There are people here trusting God for direction. Very clear direction for the next level of their lives. Could be maritally, could be geographic location, whatever it is. Hear God in this season like never before. Hear God in this season like never before. Lift your hands. I release upon you the grace for supernatural miracles receive it right now receive it right now saboto so bring it here receive it right now from tonight i declare whoever you speak over and command their destinies to open may my god honor it i said may my god honor it Whoever fights you goes down immediately. Whoever fights you goes down immediately. Hear me? Whoever mocks your passion for God goes down immediately. Whoever has said over his dead body for you to rise, may his prayer be answered. Whoever has said over his dead body for you to rise in Koinonia tonight, may their prayers be answered. Every embargo of bad luck upon your face that makes your helpers look at you and turn aside, I tear that fail completely in the name of Jesus. favor like never before testimonies like never before koinonia is the place of the anointing koinonia is the place of unction i pray for you a new a fresh grace and anointing let it rest upon you like the dew of heaven begin to flow very effortlessly in the gifts of the spirit I'm praying it again. Begin to flow very effortlessly in the gifts of the Spirit. Begin to flow effortlessly in the gifts of the Spirit. The mantle of honor that God has put upon my life, God has put upon this ministry. 
you are part of this vision you are under this grace there's no reason why it should not work in your life i command it to start speaking now no more dishonor in your life no more dishonor in your life hear me for those who have been trying certain things for a long time whether it's exams whether it's admission whatever you have been doing again business i don't care i don't know where the embargo came from but i break it right now from today any man that looks upon you may god cause them to bless you whatever has killed your prayer life this night I release upon you the spirit of prayer and supplication listen see let me tell you something don't ever let people there are people who are under such passion for new things the system of the kingdom is dynamic but the foundations of the things that make men grow are the same prayer the word corporate fellowship obedience if you leave any of these things and you say you are looking for power or looking for anointing is a joke you will never find it one more time i restore your prayer life in the name of jesus christ i don't know what killed your passion for the word your passion for bible study your passion for devotion your passion for the things of god but i command the restoration this night I don't know what took away your passion for the house of God but in the name of Jesus may a love for the house of God like never before come upon you in the name of Jesus the grace God released to bring the word triumph to come to pass in this ministry may that grace speak over you I speak over your life it is your year of triumph therefore whatever has mocked God in your life I command that in as you enter April from tomorrow you triumph over it hello scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you